Opa! Welcome everybody to Stavi's World, 904-800-STAV. We'll solve all your problems, call in. Um, very happy to have Sarah Sherman in Stavi's World, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Of course. You just, yeah, you got you get the fucking standing O. Thank we got you, super producer you. Eldis wearing a loud garish shirt just for Sarah. Can people see that? I they had to. Eldis. I had to. Yeah, we yeah. got the camera going right here. Yeah, he's got the Alba cam. Wow. You know how the fuck we do. <laughs> we got high production value here at Stavi's World. I literally would have worn something to match that. Like, yeah. I got a vest with a bunch of playing cards on it. <laughs> I have my dice earring that I got in Vegas. Ooh, hell yeah. I know. I was looking for, like, my most garish thing. I was like, <laughs> well, does this even make sense for her? Does she? Would she wear something so figurative? <laughs> <laughs> but clearly. <laughs> that is sick. I love, the, I love the teddy bear. My dad got this for me. That's a good oh, look. Yeah, and there's teddy bear. The back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great look. Yeah, now, cool. when did this dressing stupid start, would you say? <laughs> it always. Always, yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, I remember in middle school, like, um, I would go through the, I would, like, not get parts in the plays or whatever. Oh. So I would be at play rehearsal. Yeah, yeah. But, like, with nothing to do. <laughs> Damn. So the, like, old weird lady who did the costumes for all the plays would let me go through the costume <laughs> closet. Oh, wow. So I'd be, like, rolling through middle school wearing, like, a hoop skirt from, like, you know, a Shakespeare play <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. Oh, wow, interesting. So it's, like, it's a, because you weren't a good child actor, you developed I, yes. a distinct sense of style. I want. We did a musical. If you're the lead in Oklahoma in seventh you grade, you're the time. Yeah, you're fucking in jeans right now. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you're in chuggy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're watching The Office. You're having fucking pumpkin spice lattes right now. <laughs> and, and look at me now. You're still drinking pumpkin spice lattes. But yeah. But oh, dressing no, like a schizophrenic homeless person. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to like, actually, maybe you can help me with this. I did yeah. a show last night and I was trying to do, not to brag, did a show last night. Nice. Dude. And I was trying to do a joke because I just turned 30. Mm, and I was happy like, birthday. thank you so much. And I, I was trying to do a joke. Like I was dressed like a, you know, like crayon or something. <laughs> sure, sure. And I like on the, bu on the bus ride to the show, bus ride, because even though I'm on TV, I still like, I'm just like you people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> SNL don't pay that good, folks. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the dirty little secret. And you guys are paying me like $8,000 a year. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. We're matching your rate. Yeah, perfect. We're matching 8, your rate. Oh well, I, like, I was trying to think. I'm like, I'm 30, so I can't, like, I know that I can't really, like, dress like this for much longer. Right. And I was, like, trying to think but of But you're a on TV, so that kind of... Does it? Yeah, you get to be, people. People give you credit when you're famous, even when you don't deserve it. Like They're like, oh, that's how they behave. But you don't... Obviously... You know that you don't have to and you shouldn't, sure, but no, you totally. get you get a, you know. Like when I sit on the train looking like this, I know that I am perceived as like a crazy person on the train. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, I don't know. You have like, you know, the mullet. The mullet. Jewish features. Jewish features. They're like, it's a bitch from Brooklyn. That's yeah, what they're that's thinking. Right, that's true. That, they, that you own like a little fuck it, like a little a shop, like an ethical Cam coffee shop. But And by the way, I just want to remember, I have had this haircut for 10 years. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I do want everybody to know that. <laughs> they're stealing your shit. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I just want, I don't want anyone to think that I moved to, to Brooklyn. I so do live in Brooklyn. Cats you live in bag. Brooklyn. I don't want people to think that I moved there and be, had this haircut. I've made this bad mistake. You know, it's interesting. Time. You are really like, you're they, them core. <laughs> it's and like, it's yes. like, it's like you are, you're, you're she, her, as yeah, far as I her. know. I'm here. You're uh, loud and proud, she. <laughs> loud and proud, <laughs> sis. Yeah, it's about time. You might be the weirdest, like, cis rights uh person the, I, the most the most uh the most um colorful you know what i mean i have been like i've been trying this, this joke on stage where i go straight power and i hold my fist up <laughs> <laughs> and the way I, and i'm like well i look like this so i can like whatever. Yeah, yeah, like the yeah. joke is that like whatever i look you know whatever it's of a really course. good joke but i'm not gonna tell you you have to <laughs> yeah, come yeah, pay yeah, money yeah, to see yeah, yeah, yeah. and like it, and it the the chill that runs over the audience but I, was like, I, thought, <laughs> I thought i could kind of like get away yeah. with it well in a weird way when you're doing it it's almost like you're doing they them face totally. by doing straight power well you know? there was i don't have TikTok. but you're grandfathered in 
As that, far as I'm concerned. As far as I'm concerned. You've been you dressing. kind of are as well, a little bit. You think so? In what sense? <laughs> you know, you're just like, you behave strangely. And <laughs> yeah. you, you comport yourself in a bizarre way. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, in yeah. that way, you are like slightly infringing on uh, they, them territory. Oh, you think so? I oh. think I do a very... I Look, I'm not going to sit here and say I don't look stupid. <laughs> Absolutely, I've looked stupid. I can't believe you got a tooth. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Why did you get a tooth? Just because at some point you got to get a tooth. Which was one years. was it? This one. That looks normal. I know. I, there, I, there's enough of me that doesn't look normal. Totally. Do you know what I mean? Totally. But like there if was you, if about you, it. I know. Uh, the t- no tooth was awesome. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And I wanted a gold one, but it was too fucked up. Like the the implant had to be a special shape because my sure. mouth got all fucked up. From losing the tooth? Yeah, you're not supposed... It turns out you're not supposed to have no tooth for two years. Sure, because then everything kind of like shifts, it shifts around. exactly, exactly. I have a latent paranoia or I don't... I am constantly feeling like the teeth are moving around inside my head. Mm, they are a little bit. They are a little bit. But a, a little bit, uh, to, you couldn't tell, but. I feel like I can feel it happening. You can't. Like, I feel like I'm so tense all the time that I'm constantly, like, clenching. That's my teeth. possible. You seem like a pretty, like, Hot. high no, strung person. I'm, <laughs> I'm Sarah Weed. <laughs> right. Do you smoke? Do you guys smoke weed? Sarah, can you lower the mic just a little bit? Oh, is it too far? I don't yeah. want anyone to hear what I'm saying. They can't see your no, face. No, no. Yeah, yeah, just don't want to cover. Come on, bro, you're oh, fucking. Oh, we're gonna cover my show face. business, Sarah. I know. And we gotta tell you where to put the mic. I know. And do you see my posture and my hat? <laughs> yeah, is yeah. Yeah. I think I'm feeling shy today. I That's told so you, funny. turning thirty like sent me into a crazy tailspin. Why do you think that is? I don't know. It's just like the the crawl towards death is kind of I'm experiencing that in an interesting way. Yeah. And as you know, my birthday party that you actually I did not come, come to, to, you actually texted me. I'm never, I would never come to that. <laughs> I told you, I, I hurt my neck, folks. You know, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get strong, and I hurt my neck uh, lifting weights. I was trying to get too swole, and I had a fucked up nerve in my neck. I went to oh, it the was doctor. nerve. You didn't say nerve before. It's a trap issue, and it fucks up like a nerve in your neck. I'm going to physical therapy tomorrow. In fact, so. It's not bullshit. I'll show you, you my doctor's like, note. Like, you know, like do stretches like I that. I do. I have to do like this. I have to go like this for like 15 <laughs> seconds. I'm going like, like this. The physical therapy stretches are always funny. They like give you a rubber band and then you have to like kind of like move a little bit. And you're like, this can't be anything, this isn't right? doing anything. And then you do one thing and it feels like you're about to come. <laughs> it feels so good. You're like, oh, fuck my neck. <laughs> like you do nothing. And then you get like kind of hard and it's like a... Literally, the la- I fucked my shoulder up the last time I went to do PT, and I was just getting, like, an awesome massage from, like, an old Slovakian man. And that's covered man. by health insurance? Yeah, I only, I had, like, four, I had Medicaid at the time when I was, when I was broke, or Medicare, whichever one And look at is. him now, folks, he's got, his, he's got his own Greek restaurant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, they covered four sessions, not enough to heal you, but just enough to kind of make you, th- make you know what it would have felt like if you could have gotten fully healed, like a little taste uh-huh. of, of, uh, but... This guy was just giving me such an awesome massage that I wasn't hard, but I was like in the place where I was like pre hard. Like I was relaxed. I would have been ready to, like, if he left and a hot girl came in, would have been awesome. It sounds like you're going to be in physical therapy for the next like two years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not to brag, when I was in Vancouver recently, I know, nice. I know, I was in Vancouver, oh, and yeah. I'm, I know you're like touring I like Vancouver, stuff. Right? I can be international as well. <laughs> yeah. Vancouver's b- gorgeous. It's really cute. It's a great place. A lot of fucking. Uh, a lot of nature, great Not Chinese any, food. Really? They don't. They just any. got Uber. You didn't have any Chinese? No, but I did wake up. Listen to this. Woke up 8 a.m., walked to the water, and saw a seaplane. Wow. Can you believe that? It's the little things in That's life. That's cute. You know, like a seaplane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I got a. I did the thing where, like, my, my flight was at, like, midnight, but they wouldn't let me check out of the hotel. I, I, I had tried to get, like, extended whatever mm-hmm. at the hotel. So check out. But they were like, no, you got to leave at noon. So I had to walk around Vancouver over the bag like all wow. day you like until my bag in the hotel I just didn't want to be a bother. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to deal with it. And so I was walking around all day, like went to like two movies, didn't know what to do. And then I was like, oh, I guess I can like go to a, get a massage or something. Yeah, there and you in go. Canada, when you get a massage, uh, they have uh, to jack you off at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, because they, they go, sorry. You know? yeah. And by the way, every sorry joke in Canada doesn't do well. No, of course they not. They don't like that. <laughs> I thought my big opener was going to be like, I look like Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys. And everyone's just kind of like, huh? Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was gonna like slay the house down boots. Yeah, that's just like a an obscure sitcom from there. Like it'd but be like you talking about wings or something here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It'd be like you talking about. I thought talking about Trailer Park Boys in Canada would be like making a The Office joke or something. No, no, no. That's a definitely. That's like a. That's like mullet haircut. Sure. Like that's all. That's it. in the community of people that look stupid. Trailer totally. Park Boys is like friends. Totally. But most normal people do not watch Trailer Park Boys. But that, don't you think in Canada it's like the thing? I don't think so. I guess not. Look up most look up most um uh popular thing popular in Canada, sitcoms ever. in Canada. <laughs> it's I, probably some bullshit we've never even heard of. Oh, you can look at it on the TV. Wow. Yeah. But yeah. I went and I got a massage in Canada and they uh, it, it, you can. They're covered by health insurance in Canada. Whoa! Like a fancy massage is like considered, and that it's, it's like with a diffuser, like essential oils and shit in the background. Yeah, it was a whole it's thing. A spa setup. It was a whole, and then they, you check off a thing on your like form, like oh, like whatever. And I was like, so sorry, what did you, you have gave to pay? me stop giving me diet uh. root beer, <laughs> and it's giving me crazy burps today. <laughs> it's good as fuck. We're still trying to get sponsored by NW. How do you have to ask? You would think that they would. I mean, isn't this the most popular podcast in the world? <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. Not how popular is Trailer Park Boys in Canada, motherfucker. What's the most popular sitcom in well, Canada? Well, then you get like a subjective answer. Letter Kenny, like <laughs> Kim's Convenience, Working Moms. I know, but these are like listicles, oh, probably Park written Boys. by Americans. So that's true. That's it's true. hard. It's hard to really gauge. Like, okay, okay, whatever. Who gives a fuck? Like, do you know? Like, okay. The point is, Sarah bombed in Vancouver. I got <laughs> it. Doesn't matter. I when I was in Vancouver, I well. I, I, um, the green room to my show mm -hmm. was like a curtain, like in a, in a oh, corner, you know that. what I'm saying? In and the, in just in the room, just in the, the room. If oh. I had to use the toilet, I would have Brutal. to like be with the common people, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Like yeah, and roughing sucks. it up with the rough, you know, your fucking clown shoes are tripping over all the chairs <laughs> and everything. <laughs> yeah. And you can like, you know, it's me in the stall because my little clown pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just see, they just see gold, gold, uh, sequin over Walls on the floor. They're like, oh, Sarah's shitting in here before the show. Literally, hundred percent. And then, like, some girl actually tweeted at me after one of the shows. And I was like, I think I was shitting next to you. And, then, and I was like, behind like a napkin on a string, like mm. wait after the show. And I could hear people like outside the curtain being like, Sarah, Sarah, come out. <laughs> That's and I was horrible. like, kind of, I was kind of like huddled up in a corner, like kind of like waiting for everybody to leave, and yeah. like. Uh, that's I, atrocious. They, I, they will that's find not you. There's got to be another room that you can go to. They the will, venue fucked up. Uh, well, Drag them. I'm name not them. That, I'm not that pot. Like, I can't do a stop, sell out, big sure. Caesar's Palace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, I'm still yeah, we're doing. coming to Caesar's Palace real soon. <laughs> Me and you Elvis are going to be doing magic. <laughs> you know, this is going to be doing fucking Siegfried and Roy shit. I've been begging Sav to do an Atlantic City show for <laughs> years. I really this have. This man loves Atlantic I'm, City. I'm dying to, I'm dying to like he, go him there for a comedy show. Yeah. <laughs> him and his boys used to take like, him and his, because uh, you know, he's got like a B group of friends. Like, sure. you know, in Seinfeld where there's that Bizarro episode, and it's like, he's got like that kind of, like, he's got, because we grew up, we have like a, a group of best friends. It's probably like, you know, we call it the four skins because okay, awesome. there's uh, we're all uncircumcised, uh -huh, right and yeah. at any point we can. That's right, and at, <laughs> at any point we can get four of us. My brothers can come in. Uh -huh. We have my old college roommate. We have our our best friend from growing up. His code name for the podcast is Big P. Sure. We don't want to give out his real name. Okay. <laughs> but anyway. And so you guys haven't had your Saturn return where you had to reparent yourself and kind of like grow <laughs> up. <and kinda> like <laughs> I think we've got. I think this is it. Actually, our Saturn return. Yeah. But he's got a group of circumcised friends oh. that he also hangs out with. One of them actually is uncircumcised. Wow. Yeah. Is it a bunch of Jews? No, no, come on. not just disgusting. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it's, it's the opposite. It's like central Pennsylvania yeah, based yeah. people. Even whiter than, uh, he, he needs to go even more Gentile than, <laughs> than Europeans. But anyway, Eldis has his bizarro friend group, and they would take like Atlantic City trips, sure. and it's like four to a, you know, four guys in a room. Two uh, queen beds. Everyone's oh yeah. <laughs> dirty carpet. <laughs> Might bring it back this summer. I could go yeah. last year, but I'm itching to go back. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> Where would you do a show in Atlantic City? It would be a casino, right? Probably. Oh, yeah. look, come on. Let me. I'll open. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, 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 I yeah. want to do Atlantic City so badly. All right, we'll look into it. We'll look into it. We do have we do have to go to Atlantic. It's also like close, and it would be a funny like weekend. Good yeah. content, baby. We could drive. We could gamble. Although they don't let you film in casinos. 
because it's like too depressed. They're like, we know that it's too dark in here. Well, like they, we know it's no, too depressing. They don't give a fuck about that. They no, they, they like that. They love it. The darker, the better. The more, the more money's going in. They just don't want you cheat. Like if you film it, you can oh, like watch, sure. watch the deal or pick up on their. You know, their I I had never been to Vegas until recently. I did a show in Vegas. Hell yeah! How it it was? I think it was the best. It was the best weekend of my life. <laughs> it was awesome. You know what that is? You have a very ve- you would definitely fit in Vegas. Well, everybody's like it's nasty, it's gross. I'm like, what are you talking about? They've got Paris inside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I also oh love God. the fucked up, the shitty part of Vegas, the like Fremont Street, I guess, the downtown. Oh, Vegas. it's all, like Circus Circus. Love the, yes, yeah. exactly. I got my keychains. I got a little fake license plate this big that says yeah. Vegas all shiny. It's like, There's I a like clown that one. There's a clown one that. Isn't fuck. that Circus Circus? Maybe it is Circus Circus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the wait. The giant clown. Yes, that's Outside. Circus Circus. That's right. they, yeah, apparently, yeah. there's a great steakhouse there. Really? Somebody told me Circus Circus has a great steakhouse. You know, I've never been to a restaurant and been like, I'll have a steak. Wow. You don't seem like a big red meat. Actually, I'm very low in, what is it? Iron? Uh, B12? Is that, No, okay. is that what you get from red meat? Yeah, iron. Very low in it. I'm getting, I'm not vegetarian, and I'm not vegetarian, even though I have a mullet. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a vegetarian. Everything about you is non binary, vegetarian, <laughs> lesbian, and you're none of those things. No, actually, none of those things. Yeah. I think it's like important to have straight representation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the fucking just people that look stupid as shit. Yeah, but they're like so normal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, where you grew up in Long, on Long Island, is yeah, that correct? I grew up on Long Island, yeah. um, and now I moved back here like a year and a half ago, but, which is why, like I was telling you, like why my parents were at my birthday party because right. it's like Sarah lives here now. We gotta yeah, you know. which sounds like it was huge flop. It was a flop. <laughs> it was just here. like it was like no so, Jost, no Che, no Jost, no Che. <laughs> well, that's like, that's so my, it was eight p.m. My mom goes. I wrote on the flyer eight p.m. Yeah, and then my mom goes, "Where is everybody?" And I just immediately my body downloaded the information and said you will have a panic attack now and it was just like literally off to the races like I was on Mars for the whole rest of the the, for five hours was not the body was not like the 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 plane was on the tarmac but the pilot was was in Atlantic City (laughs) Denzel and the pilot is Denzel in flight (laughs) just getting fucked up getting some pussy in this hotel room yeah that was me I was getting mad pussy and then my mom the next day he goes so did any celebrities show him and I was like no stop said he broke his neck <laughs> yeah your parents are big stop heads honestly my da- I th- they would I think that my parents would really like yeah, it yeah. they should go to like you gotta do a show at Governors and I'm doing Long a show Island. I'm doing a show at the Paramount on Long Island Oh, I'll give your parents tickets. Damn, dude, you do like crazy rooms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Things it's are going good. <laughs> Things are going great. Tell, hey, listen, tell the Shermans they fuck, they got tickets if they want them. <clears throat> so I'm like, this is from this root beer. Do you want to do the show? Actually, if you're you're probably you're probably working. When? I don't know. We'll look it up later. I would love to. Yeah. And I would bring out a squad. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like April twenty second. I think. Sold out, like, that dude. Weekend. Yeah. But and that's get, like a fifteen hundred person room. It's pretty You're big. just getting fifteen hundred people from Long Island. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is a so bunch of your fucking Hebrew school classmates are gonna be all, there. They're big stop heads. I wonder <laughs> yeah. like how many people from my past are gonna come crawling out of the woodwork being like, who've never said anything to me in ten years? <laughs> yeah. No, like loved you on the SNL who are gonna be like, yo, you want stuff's YouTube show? <laughs> is this a podcast or is it it's just both. a YouTube video? We do it both. We release wow. it as a podcast. Yeah. Wow, you're yeah. like a mogul. Fucking dude. podcast. I'm trying. I'm trying videos, to be like clips. I'm trying to be like P Diddy, dude. He's got mouths to feed. I know. I got an Albanian on my fucking payroll. I taught this man knew nothing before me. What do you? What would you say your job is? Like a official title. I don't know. I guess podcast producer is just the easiest to say and understand. But live a producer and live events coordinator. I've seen you record things at a show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he works the I, shows. I still, so. I still yeah. do that at like on the road and stuff. But Yeah, honestly, it's just like I would kill myself if I was completely alone on 100%, the road. hundred percent. No problem. And no so question. I got my boy. I just got my boy out. He was working some horrible media job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where he was, he was Name doing it. like, he was doing like, um, galleries of like the CMT awards. Like, like this kind of, <laughs> this kind of <laughs> listicle. You would never believe what Kenny writing. Chesney wore. Yeah. <laughs> like you were never Eight believe. things you could never believe Ken 
DJs anymore. <laughs> yeah, there. literally. We because we were roommates here, and whenever there was some stupid award show, Elders oh would be like, God. "Hey, I need to, I need to, uh, I need the TV. I need to watch the VMAs and and, <laughs> and, do, and do a list the Oscar, about it." The Oscars just happened. I was like getting chills just thinking about my <laughs> yeah. past, like this this past weekend. I was like, I. I, I would like do like red carpet oh. bullshit, just like this man copy dude. pasting shit from Getty and like doing those dumb galleries. The worst part about living in New York was when I invite everybody to my birthday party and literally half of my New York friends going, I can't go to your birthday because it's on the Oscars night and I need to do fucking whatever <laughs> website article. I need to blog about literally. it. Literally. Wow. Oh, so that's a, like you a were New going, York thing. You, know you were saying? going head to head with the Oscars. Come on. I I couldn't believe. No, of course. You're absolutely correct. But well, I, First of all, l- like I knew when that was. I know. It's so funny to give a fuck about the Oscars. Like, who cares? Well, well at, at, he, excuse me. He was nominated, yeah. Elvis. At, at that, at that Austin job. Austin Butler at in that job, I realized, yeah. at that job, I realized, like, whoa, this is literally just for fucking annoying ass media nerd like people. Of course. Because no one gives a fuck Nobody about the Oscars. No one watches. It's like, it's like you're writing these articles like, Everyone's so excited about this huge night in entertainment. No, it's like no one gives you're just copy pasting shit from like People magazine. Of course, like everyone sites. wants to cover them. It's all a bunch of fucking nerds that want to cover the Oscars so they can be friends with celebrities. <laughs> and every, oh, that's interesting. And every, I mean, you you know how it is. Comedy yeah. journalism is like half the people that do that shit are failed comedians. Well, how come they're not writing nice things about me if they want to be my <laughs> friend so bad? <laughs> you haven't reached out to them. You got to fucking hey you, man. Come literally, people that get good write ups are like friends with. Like the vulture people or whatever the fuck. Yeah, that's that? part anyway, of it. That's right. part of it. You know. Well, if anyone wants to write like an awesome article about me, like you can. <laughs> yeah. That I don't care about the Oscars, but for some reason I was like devastated that Austin Butler didn't win for doing Elvis. Yeah, it was awesome. He was he, awesome in Elvis. He was awesome. He was awesome. I remember looking like I thought that movie was gonna be fucking horrible. It was and literally the best movie I've ever so seen. Good. It was. It was so <laughs> fucking good. It was like it was like a movie for people with no. Uh, attention span because it was like every 100%. 40 seconds it's like wait it's five years later <laughs> it's like <laughs> and you just breeze past like elvis's mom dying like oh, no totally. no important emotional stuff happened he's no. just but they they spent like a full 10 minutes on how elvis uh saved the civil rights movement <laughs> like it's just like elvis goes and sings with black people and bb king's like wow you're almost fucking better than martin luther king jr <laughs> it's like it's awesome it was like baz being like let's get ahead of this problem yeah, yeah 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 we yeah. know that people are like gonna be upset about elvis but let's just get ahead of it yeah. by having this awesome scene in the window and and yeah like, the window was sick and then the him falling in love with his wife who was i believe 13 when they met in real life <laughs> and they, and they just kind of they just kind of breeze on by that one and that he's he's in the army and he fucks like uh literally like a general's child yeah, <laughs> and he then did it's like, but hey that. he made an honest woman out of her and he had he an awesome her. little outfit so you're just kind of distracted yeah, at the time. yeah he looks so cute in his little outfit it was such a it was an awesome movie that's the thing about the oscars it's like you didn't give elvis a single shred of an oscar yeah. then you're wrong you're wrong for that yeah tom hanks is in a fat suit for awesome. some reason why did everybody <laughs> he, had the, he had the good fat performance it wasn't brendan fraser <laughs> brendan fraser didn't even do a weird accent for no reason <laughs> i want to watch the whale though because i know it sucks i you would have to pay me 455 dollars <laughs> it. it's, it's, it's too brutal yeah. you can't ask me to watch something that brutal <laughs> yeah i can't wait to see i, I we, we you know what we should watch it and just just for do the like fans. a live beavis and butthead we, should, we should do I'm, like a- i'm dying to watch it i was like so excited when i saw the screenshots from it but i wasn't like disappointed i thought he like actually got that fat or something yeah he got I apparently thought- pretty fat oh yeah. really underneath underneath but like but you can't tell like that because you see red, you see red carpet shit of him and he's like you know he's like a he's 40 like something right. guy yeah. kind of thing but he was a true piece I was of like, ass damn, he got that fat that's fucking awesome yeah and yeah, I found yeah, that yeah, it was yeah. fake he was a fucking. I, that was watching the Mummy when I was in Austin. Oh my god! Oh my god! That boy, that boy was sexy. George of the George Jungle. George of the Jungle. Come on, Jeez. come on. I like have a very like distinct memory in my head of like watching that as a child and like seeing that his pectorals were like perfectly mm-hmm. square and being like, I didn't even know it could be like that in real life. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone, everyone, every man, every strong male figure in your life was probably like 
a Jewish man with scoliosis. Literally, I didn't that know. Point. I didn't know that boys could be tall. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Like, it, it, this is a thing now that, like, um, I wonder now is happening on Long Island, like the leg lengthening surgery. Oh, right. I right, do wonder right. if little Jewish boys on Long Island are now doing that. For sure. Well, I had there was a little Jewish kid. In my middle school, who was taking HGH? Oh yes, we had that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We had that was yes. And he didn't get taller; like he got like a little taller, I guess. But he was I, like he was literally like four, like eleven. In but I think grade. that they do get taller. Yeah, probably. And then it just means he was gonna be really little. Yeah, he's gonna be a real little guy. <laughs> yeah, real <laughs> yeah, little yeah, 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 guy. yeah, yeah. Can God. we get Ben on Zoom right now? No, sorry, what? Benny Butt Cheeks. We can't get him in the mix next time. Oh my god, the way you guys broke that to me was like devastating. I like know. you looked me dead in my eyes and were like and you said something like really earnest kind of. Can't happen, sorry. <laughs> sorry, you're just gonna have to keep talking to me for another God knows how long. We <laughs> we could try possibly. No, okay. no, no. You you'll fuck it up so bad. <laughs> the whole, you'll like lose the recording. I'm, I'm doing I'm doing some math. Don't here. do the math. <laughs> let it's, me let, it's let something me. Based I'm on making, this, I think you were just trying to get ahead of like this. I'm making an executive decision here <laughs> as the as the senior president of Stavi Baby Enterprises and I'm telling you to stand down on hitting Zoom right now because something he will fuck up. Yes, so sir. badly. Like I saw this really like does. smile spread across his face. He has pride and he believes in himself <laughs> but the problem is he's wrong and right. I have to be here to remind him to, to take him down a couple I th- notches. I think it wouldn't take much but I don't give what? a fuck that much. <laughs> Look, air your own shit out with Ben on your own time. <laughs> I want to I want to get a, I want to get Benny Butchie's arm, and I want to say, look, I'm on the podcast. I was being, I did a good job. Okay, just so, for yeah, the listeners at home, listeners. I'm bad at scheduling. Okay, yes. Sarah was ducking us. She was scared. She was like, I'm gonna get canceled. <laughs> gonna Lauren's canceled. gonna fire me. Gonna I'm gonna say me. the R word. I'm gonna say the I'm R word. I'm gonna bring up Palestine. I'm gonna bring it up. <laughs> and so we were like, and she she was ducking us for a while, but she's here now, folks. And we're talking about little Jews. And we're talking um, about little Jews. It's just that if somebody asks me to do something on a text. It's like sometimes it just is not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's something about like I have to have three different people telling me to go somewhere to be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't where know. do you think that? What do you think that is? Sarah? I don't know. I have an avoidant personality okay. disorder, and um, it's actually coming now that I'm 30 again. I yes. need to bring this up again. No, it's please. like stuff like taxes. It's not going to really happen unless there's a gun to my head. <laughs> it's I, it's getting like that's the problem with being 30 is like all of my little personality quirks aren't cute anymore. No, not at all. It sucks. But and I look at like it gave me kind of panic when I came in here because I was like, I said to you, I was like, wait, are you good with money? Like I'm looking yeah, around. Yeah, you have yeah. like My kind of an official setup. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, have employees. Yeah. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Stav yeah. Halkius is better at money than me. <laughs> I like, know. Suck. That does suck. That does suck. <laughs> like, fuck you. I'm sorry, dude. dude. I don't, I'm not even like incorporated. Like, yeah, I don't know, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm like actually feeling like, you know, okay. Like that's what happens because you rejected traditional Judaism. That so is what early happened. That if you had stuck around a little longer, you know, I you had a regular hair just a couple oh, of years longer, God. you'd know about taxes right now. God, I just, I like rejected so Like I'm like, I'm never going to grow up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm like, fuck it. Like, okay, here yes, we are. I'm listening. Let's, okay, what's today? Today um, is a Thursday. It's a Thursday. Let's say, let's say mm-hmm. you have a show in New Orleans next yeah. Thursday. Next Would Thursday. you at this point have already booked your flights and hotels? Yes, for sure. <sighs> Without question. In fact, I have to book after this. What we're doing, the thing we have to do is figure out our Chicago. I already have the Chicago Airbnb and the flight. And God I need, damn. I need a hotel because I'm going in one day earlier. Wait, but when is that? That's probably in what two weeks, three weeks. But uh, you're just yeah. like on top of your crap by yourself. Yeah, I mean, I've been fucking on the road so long that it's just like me I, too. I just can't. I have made too many mistakes. Sure, too sure, often. Sure, like sure. I felt, I've felt this thing. Sure, of sure. not booking the or like you're like. You, you wait to the last minute and there's like the rodeo is in town I know, and you're I like know. a holiday in is $500 I know, like that I shit know. has happened to me or LA like there was one time I was in LA and I was uh, I there was like it was like Comic Con or something sure and it, I had to just Which, sleep why would you know like I wouldn't know right, that right. and I had to sleep in 
a kind of friend's basement. <laughs> like it wasn't even like like ben, I don't think Ben wasn't there or something. Like it was uh-huh. just some weird situation where I was just crashing with some guy I sort of knew. Uh-huh. And I was dating someone at the time, and we we had a hotel until. Comic Con. We had one day where uh-huh. we had to like where we needed a, and I was like with my girlfriend in a guy's basement because sure. it was either that or like the only hotel available was like some sketchy Chinatown. Like clearly people are getting sucked off by the hour there, <laughs> and it's like I'm not sleeping there. So Which it's not like, that there's anything wrong with that. that not, no, like, no, 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 of course not. I'm a big. I'm, we're pro sex worker on this podcast <laughs> without question. Absolutely. Looking- in many ways, I am a sex worker. I just have fucked up sex and tell stories about it. <laughs> like, so much of my best jokes are the most fucked up sexual encounters I've had. And your calendar is it naked? Is, it is pretty much, yeah, it's soft core You're selling sex. I am, no, in certainly. That way. I, like, I, I had a show in Kansas City a couple weeks ago during... Again, why would I know when the Super Bowl is? Sorry, no, no. <laughs> oh my God, they were playing. Kansas City was playing in the Super Bowl, but it, but the Super Bowl wasn't in Kansas City. No, but still, no one gave a fuck about your show. Well, but then, but then, but also, I guess all I, the gay all nerds the, are coming to your show. No, it was it was like all the hotels were like expensive because everybody was going to Kansas City to watch the Super Bowl on oh, the TV. Weird. Yeah, yeah. But it's like shit like that where I'm like, if I just had thought a little just bit a little in bit. advance, a little. How was the show? Well, actually, I was opening for Adam Sandler. That's I've been sick. Th- and I, it, it is, it's That's aw- fucking awesome. It's awesome. But like, so it was like the night before the Super Bowl in Kansas City. And can you tell I, him I said hello, by the way? I'll tell him you. Say hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Adam. He's my favorite. So Truly, my bet. Like, I love Adam. Sandler he would so love much. you. Yeah. Tell him I said what's up. Hey, look, it's. Our, I'll send him. I'll send him the link to this. So just don't say anything bad about else about little Jewish boys anymore. <laughs> no, I'm a big fan. <laughs> Pro little Jewish guys. <laughs> he like so. I've been to a couple bar mitzvahs. Come on. I get, I I know you could chop it up at a bar mitzvah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Should yeah. Should I yeah. go to one right now? If anyone wants to like call in or whatever on your <laughs> yeah, call in show. Soon the call ins are, are coming. <laughs> I'm just gonna make you talk about yourself a little more because it's making you so uncomfortable. Well, no, I was going to say... I know. <laughs> I'm relishing this. Well, the... the, 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 the can you tell that? I don't know why I'm having like such an identity crisis. It's and interesting. I, I'm just like... It's just for the past week, I'm just like... Every Turning 30 is a big one, though. And, I get And that. I feel like totally crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I there the show was in Kansas City the night before the Super Bowl, and it's like, you know, it's Sandler, so it's like a 15,000-person yeah, stadium. Yeah, yeah. And I fucking, I didn't know... Any, I don't know anything of the Super Bowl with my little haircut or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was the I was the first comic to go up, and it's like so I mean, you have going you, up cold? Well, actually, there was a, no. I was the second. Okay. But Rob Schneider, who was before. Actually, you? Schneider wasn't there. But wow. speaking of Elvis, you know who does the best Elvis? Mr. Rob Schneider. Really? Yes. It's the most moving Elvis impersonation <laughs> you've ever. I was literally brought to tears. I did a sandwich show that was me, David Spade, Rob Schneider, and he did an Elvis song to close the show, and I was open mouth sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most moving performance I've ever That's seen. That's so my fucking awesome. It was sick. But like, <laughs> d- have you done a stadium? Like, no. I'm excited. I'm doing the fully loaded tour. This uh, we're playing. We're playing. Um, what is that? Burke Kreischer like gets a bunch oh. of the best comics. It's me. It's literally me. Best in comics. Vegas. I'm not on the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only like <laughs> Tiffany Haddish is on oh, it. Oh wow! She, she took your spot. You guys, yeah, really, you guys do a lot of you, a lot of overlap there. <laughs> She's always like, I'm Jewish. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jewish. I'm a clown. I'm a lesbian clown, but I I'm straight for some reason. Um, and uh, it's like literally on in Vegas. It's me. Uh, me, Bert, Louis Black. Oh, <laughs> like, it's fucking awesome. It's, oh, she, uh, Andrew Santino, Big J. It's oh. gonna be fun. But we're playing Vegas. We're playing uh, where the Utah Jazz play. We're playing like where the oh, Thunder you're play. doing like fifteen thousand yeah, yeah. It's oh, my first time. Wow. I've never the the biggest show I've done is probably I don't know fifteen hundred seats. Nothing crazy. Sure, it's I I've done like. Mm, three or four shows with Sandler and it's legitimately crazy yeah. because well you can't see anything you can't hear anything <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. my jokes I'm just like talking like manically really fast yeah, and like yeah. rhythmically kind of right but it's you like hear yourself echoed back in a giant like football oh, stadium and so show. I get like so disoriented yeah, yeah, and yeah. like distracted because then I hear the sound of my own voice and I'm like oh that's awful and then yeah. there's like a giant <laughs> jumbotron behind me of yeah. me yeah 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 and like 
everyone there is like i mean it'll be different for you guys because it's like everyone is there to see you like no not one right. person in kansas city like, who the fuck is this like oh, this is sandman <laughs> yeah. bring on the sandman <laughs> <laughs> well everyone's like dressed up as yeah. like you know sloppy joe or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah 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 and so and then i get like so i i like wish i was better at it i, I want i i because i want to keep doing those shows but i am legitimately bad at being up there <laughs> <laughs> and like the night before the Super Bowl, I was like, I was like, I, I, I tried desperately hard to do a Super Bowl joke where I said something like, I got on stage. And then I said, like, go Chiefs or something. Yeah. And then 15,000 people, I just heard like, like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it's, um, it sounded like boo. Did you say go Chiefs or go Eagles? No, I said go Chiefs. <laughs> okay. Okay. I know. I, I know. I know. Okay. I said go Chiefs. And then I heard boo. And so I just, again, my, I was, uh, because they go like, cheese. Like (laughs) that's their like chant or something. Oh, I see. I see. But it sounds like boo. Mm. But do you know what I'm talking about? This like chiefs thing. I don't. But I, you know, it was like I, they, I believe you. they have a chant that sounds like boo. Gotcha. So I had to do 10 minutes just with my like head, like completely dislocated. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like, immediately, as soon as I get out on stage, go Chiefs, boo. Oh, okay, well. What did you follow? What kind of jokes you follow that up Well, with? then I had like Super Bowl, honey. Well, this was Let's really hung it. my hat. Let's hear it. Super Bowl, the only Super Bowl I care about is the toilet bowl big enough to accommodate the liquid shit I'm going to have after all this. <laughs> Kansas now that's City a barbecue. joke. <laughs> now that's my, that, how do you do a frat snap? This yeah, thing? Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> this is something about like spring diarrhea out of my little Jewish asshole. <laughs> and everyone's just kind of sitting there like. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't like see a smile in a 15,000 person. Of course, stadium. of course. No, that does seem nerve wracking because you can't kind of feel the crowd out. It has to be like so clear where yes. they're supposed to laugh. Yes. You have to be set up punch because yes. like there can't be any ambiguity. And I'm not a set up punchline comedian. No. So. Some might say you're an, uh, some no might punch say I'm comedian. Not a comedian. Yeah, yeah there you go. Sorry. Some, <laughs> some might say I'm not a comedian at all. No, no, you're funny. It was too easy. It was too easy. <laughs> I would basically say I'm, I, am, I have no jokes. So no, I'm no you're, you're here for a reason, but, but it, it was, was easy to say that. It was a nice setup. It was a nice setup. What can I, I said, say? And by the way, I prepared you by saying not a joke. Yeah, yeah. But again, Super Bowl. <laughs> I love Super Bowl. I actually think that's... I would have been... You would have heard one guy being like... <laughs> Woo! No, girl. But his... The, to, to his credit, like his out his stand-up is so bizarre and yeah. like absurd. Oh, cool. yeah, yeah. Have you seen his I hour? love the first one, yeah. The, it's, it's incredible. It's cr- the Netflix it's, special is so good in a way that like all these guys have been coming... Like there's been a lot of nostalgia. Sure, Or sure, old guys sure. who don't have their fastball anymore coming back. Sure. And it's like so clear that they haven't thought about this, haven't thought about mm-hmm. being relevant. Mm-hmm. And San- and I was so nervous because I love Sandler. So you, he was my guy. He's your guy. And that special came out and I was like, holy fuck, it's better than I thought it was. Yes. Because he knew yes. what he was doing. He, it was legitimately funny. It was legitimately like, like thinking about people now and just sentimental enough where just he wasn't a little. he wasn't it wasn't a crutch like some people use as a crutch but like but how could like, you not how do could that you not? because he does mean so much to everyone totally. watching so that first special i was like oh my god this is like because a lot of our comedy heroes are breaking our hearts these they days <laughs> they, re- they really are the people we grew up with don't know how to stay relevant yeah. in a certain way and don't know how yeah. to have, have like a the thing about Sam that i love so much is like how fun it always was yes like i hate I'm on the record as I'm anti-making points as a comedian. A hundred percent. This is not debate club. I'm trying to have a You're good time. You're not running for Senate. No. Nobody's and running like, for Senate. And I like literally his, his like uh, albums, the like, uh, you know, they're all going to laugh at you. All the like comedy mm-hmm, song ones mm-hmm. where they're just like so vulgar, so medium pace. Where he says, but take a shampoo bottle and put it in my ass. <laughs> like shit like that. Yes. Like. So absurd, so fucking... It was just funny and f- dumb and a good time. And that captured that. And it was like new material. And it was sentimental. It was fucking 
so good. And I guess I just didn't. I mean, because I've listened to all the old stuff. I'm obviously like, you know, I'm a little Jewish girl from Long Island. Like I grew up on Adam Sandler. That's your guy. That's Jordan for Long Island Jews. Yeah, period. And like me for a second being like Jordan. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Come on, you live in Chicago. I got it, I got it, I got it. That one was easy. (laughs) (laughs) Go (laughs) Chiefs. And like he, his hour now that he's doing, by the way, it's two hours. He will do two hours. It's like... I forgot, like, he is so weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, the, his crowds end up do kind of liking me because they, they're down with weird. But it's, like, it's like he'll do, like, absurdist, surrealist, like, storytelling of, like, made-up stories yeah, that yeah, make, yeah. like, ha- follow, like, a bizarre sense of logic. Yeah, and are, yeah. like, they, they aren't, like... I mean, it isn't, like, set-up punchline yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. Which, in a lot of ways, then, it's, like, even though you feel like you're not doing well it's like you probably are but also well. but prob but also <laughs> also as an, like that's kind of your job is to kind of prime them for like uh-huh. it's not set up punch like sure. you are weird like that is there's something useful for that at, for opening a show that way i went on i opened for eric andre on his tour before he recorded his netflix special mm-hmm. and like that was like it was, oh, I yeah. will never I mean, that's have perfect. a thing. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. I get up there, show a couple of videos with like Hamburger Helper Me coming out of a paper mache butthole, and they <laughs> yeah, are ready yeah, to yeah. go. <laughs> they are so ready to <laughs> Like, and that was like, that was that was like the most perfect yeah, opening job of, I will ever of have. Of course. No, it was crazy. It's never going to get better than that. <laughs> you <laughs> like, peaked fully. And I know that. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I can look back on my deathbed and be like, that was fun. That was yeah, sick. We had a good time. Now, what's the what, now? We're t- thanks for bringing up the hamburger helper diary and your whole oeuvre is uh, a yeah. is a uh, you know shit coming out of pussies. Yes, you know, say that. Pl- pl- uh, balls that are infected with sure. pus and boils yeah, and that kind sure. of thing. Um, you know, that just that kind of general kind thing. of a classic, <laughs> kind of a classic <laughs> thing. Intestines, you know what I mean? Like, oh, <laughs> coming out of some guy's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So, what was the first? What's the gross shit? Like, I have my own hypotheses here sure. about like where that's all coming from but yeah. what, what do you think how'd that start well all of the like I, is I this still you getting rejected from theater 100%. club or whatever well all little kids like gross crap true like it's like it's like we all did like this at a certain point right, right and right. i like basically won a million percent my entire that's why 30 has been such a like devastating blow to me <laughs> right, right, because right, like right, right. i've just tried desperately not to grow up my entire life a little bit in yeah, a way yeah, yeah. and so like i mean who are you talking to yeah 100 percent. i'm, a, nice I'm on my peter pan shit <laughs> myself of but course. Then, that's like it's like i'm i'm retaining like the things that are like and especially with comedy gross uh, gro- sorry for lack of a better term gross out comedy is so fun because you get to play with the like making people laugh after they've been screaming yeah 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 and for sure so it's like it's just a fun and a life. groan is fun like oh. getting a whole crowd oh. to groan is awesome it's it, it is as rewarding as laughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's just like screaming. Like, yeah. Oh, what no, the fuck? Yeah. Stop. yeah. It's just awesome. And so yeah. I just, and I think a lot of like, um, you know, people think that I, I am Sarah Squirm because those things do make me squeamish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Even not you. like, yeah, I'm You're not. You're not like the queen of it. You're like, yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's like diarrhea. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I love when I have yeah, diarrhea. One, <laughs> one diarrhea, please for me. Like, yeah. So it's, it's just fun. It's yeah. like you know, it, there's like a whole range of. Um, it's just fun to play with it. Yeah, I get it's it. It's fun to play with doo doo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But that's why it was interesting for me to hear you talk about almost wanting to fuck Brendan Fraser in uh, George of the Jungle <laughs> uh-huh. because like. People might look at that as a horny way to do comedy, but to me, that's like anti-horny. You know what I mean? Like the gross out stuff, like the body yes. stuff. To me, that's like a I, bodies and butts are disgusting. And dicks and pussies are so gross. Yeah, I'm scared of them. Yeah, I am a prude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's yeah. like I was a little Jewish girl who grew up on Long Island, yeah. feeling disgusting, and all. It's like it's so. It's like I'm very transparent, as clear, clear yeah. as day. It's so, like I was an ugly little Jewish girl with too many pubes, sweating too much in class. <laughs> And so it's too like, many pubes. Too many pubes. As a child. A, As a child. A heavily pubed child. Full bush at age, like God knows. Like that it's 
so, so it's just like clear as day. There's you know? no, there's no, because the other thing that Jews don't get credit for actually is setting their children up for success sexually with camp, 100%. with birthright. All this kind of stuff, like, oh, and I and I think that was it was very it was like sexually t- traumatizing growing up in a yes, and like I went to a high school where you know uh, girls would get like no you know God bless go with God do whatever you want <laughs> yeah, but like yeah, they yeah. were getting nose jobs when they were thirteen wow. and so it's like the medical trauma of like kind of Holy growing up shit. so it's like people being like oh where does this body horror stuff come from it's like li- yeah like I literally was just like conscious at a young age of like someone like. Oh, Medically surgery like, yeah, yeah of surgery like and like and like if you're worried about your body it's like well you go into camp and everyone's jacking people off the, in here you're gonna get finger you're gonna get your <laughs> clit jackhammered <laughs> at age 12 and yeah that is it like birthright is sexual yeah, coupling to like further sure. a religious identity yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that it's, it, it's a smart thing to be like, hey, we're going to get them all when they're horny as hell, free uh-huh, vacation, uh-huh. fuck each other, and then just like, join, join the army, by the way. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Real quick, just join the army. And like bar, bar mitzvahs kind of also have yeah. like a, like you're like staying up late partying all night in like a sexy little For slutty sure. dress. Everyone's, cu- everyone's dressed cute. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, that's very true. But they're, they're smart about that. So we're talking no... No jacking people off in uh, a camp. Nothing, no, none no of that. way. I was like, the name Sarah Squirm comes with, like, liter- uh, my a group of friends of mine in high school were like making fun of me for being like ugly and gross and <laughs> bizarre, weird, and like would call me Squirm. These are friends, and these are friends. <laughs> <laughs> these are friends, um, and they, you know, and they do feel like they own my identity now that they came up with yeah, that nickname. Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. But so it's like you know, it's like kind of a like not like I re. Claimed an idea, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's your squirm is your n word. <laughs> 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 you, you, t- you get to say it. It's mine you take now. the power back. Well, even though and I'm you not do even say the n word anymore, yeah, famously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't even st- actually. It's kind of sad. Like I'm not squirm anymore because, yeah. like, uh, like now from the on SNL, I'm Sarah Sherman, yeah. and so now on like. Uh, post, I'm, I'm Sarah Sherman on everything, but squirm is such an easy like it's cool. trigger warning. It's True. like, you know what I mean? If you buy tickets to a show that's like Sarah Squirm, you're like, you know what you're getting into. Of as opposed course. to now, it's like, you know, like. Sarah Sherman is kind of a nice name. Just a regular bitch name. I know. Well, it's because Sherman, it was Shmuljevich at Ellis Island. Shmuljevich? Yeah. That's a sick I name. I know. I know. Shmuljevich? It could have been. <laughs> Sarah Shmuljevich? Sarah Shmuley, like. Sarah Shmuley. You got to change it, bro. I know. I Sarah can't. Shmules. I know. <laughs> the Ellis Island of it. Damn. I know. Wow. When did they... Was, are we talking great great? Yeah. How far back? Yes. Yeah, a great grandparent. Uh, My grandfather's father. Yeah. Okay. Was like, we need to get a job or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Sherm, because Sherman does feel very like just regular. It's a Sherman's guys. March to the Sea. Yeah. It's oh, a, true. Yeah. Shmuljevich. Come on. I know. That's I could kind of go Shmuel back to that. Shmuel plus Yevich. Like There's two awesome... Like there's three awesome sounds. It's so Shmuel, yeah, Jewish. And Vich. It's so I know. Jewish. It really is. It's so I could have been so. It's oh man, that's so awesome. That's so old school Jewish that it's like that's those. It's a name from countries that are so anti-Semitic. Like to have the Vich in there still. Like that's like Serbian. Like they those motherfuckers would like beat Jews on sight. <laughs> you I'm know like, what I mean? Is it right? Ru- I'm like. It's like Yiddishy or something. Yeah, yeah. It's got Yiddish plus Eastern European. It's like a nice mix of throwback. You don't get a lot. I'm anymore. like a kind of white person where it's like I never did the thing where I'm like, "Where's my family from?" Kinda. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm like, I regret now as someone who's thirty. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I guess yeah. I should know more about like what's going on with that name and who. You know what I'm saying? You still got time. I, I if they guess. came through. If they came through Ellis Island, like it's hard for because I want to know more about my. Fa- There's all this like family lore where it's like. My dad's side of the family, apparently, um, my grandma, my paternal grandmother, her uncles came to America. He had two uncles that came to America. So this would have been like before World War One. We're talking like these are old. Mo- like my grandma was born in probably the 30s. So her uncles were probably born like the fucking 1800s. Oh. And so they came to America. And the lore mm-hmm. is that one of them. Um, was a fucking bounty hunter oh. <laughs> in America okay. and that the other one was like 
a hugely influential chiropractor. That, Say no more. And that he's lit- he's buried in, on Long Island, actually. This guy's something Ligeris or some shit like that. So we'll I would him. love to learn more about that. that. And like apparently when my uh, grandparents got married, the American bounty hunter or gambler, it gets some people say it's different. Sure. Just fucking gave her a bunch of money. But it's like this weird thing where my dad hated that he came to America, but apparently it's it was in his blood. Are your parents the, from America? No, they, they were both born in Greece. We, they came here in 82. Oh, so then there was like a back and forth going on. There's a lot of back and forth. My parents, my mom's family came here in the 70s and she hated it and moved back and oh. met my dad in Athens. And then they came, they were like, we're going to go to America for a couple of years and make money. And then they couldn't have kids. So they stayed here to do like in vitro. And so the reason they stayed in America is like so that I could be born basically. Sure. So I'm a little test tube guy. Really? Little IVF guy, you yeah. gotta tell. Yeah, because I'm so perfect. <laughs> I was made in a lab. <laughs> Each gene is specifically sequenced. <laughs> I'm the ideal. You are I'm the, the ideal man. man. <laughs> I'm the Uber. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I was born with a, at a heartbeat. You can kind of tell. Oh, really? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like I kind of had like a sickly kind of like. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, uh oh, what's going no, on? No, that's we just had Chris Stefano on and his daughter. He's got like this little like feisty at like as a baby, like a one year old. She's telling people like no. She's like yelling at them, <laughs> and his like, daughter, his daughter like survived multiple Plan Bs. <laughs> like <laughs> like as a fetus, she was like fuck that. I don't. And then she comes out just feisty, and she's telling her dad to like go fuck himself. And she's like you're too fat. Like she's a three year old that's like stop eating desserts. You need to stay alive. Like. And people you can say almost like astrology isn't real, but like, what is that? <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? That's like the planets aligned. Yeah. Like that. That is a yeah. cosmic yeah. like cord of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is like fighting off the plan B and like having literally his, kid come out. his the girl the, his his now. Well, I guess they're not married because he's a piece of shit Italian. <laughs> but his girl, who he has two children with and a home with, but yeah, keep waiting on the marriage, Chris. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she was on she was on birth control and she took a plan B and this kid fucking survived. <laughs> she's a fighter. Yeah. That's she, a fighter. She's awesome. But do you have any will you do you, do you have any complications? You were born in a barn in Albania, so they don't <laughs> they don't keep records of that kind of shit. You were born next to a fucking mule, a baby you and a baby mule split a crib together. <laughs> I don't know if there's any complications. I know I was like a big baby. Yeah, you don't Aww. say. Yeah. <laughs> I was like I don't know. I was just heavy as fuck. I know my sister like uh, had the umbilical cord around her neck, oh, so it was like a close call Holy when she shit. was coming out. But damn, you look kind of C-section. Are you C-section? Am I C-section? No, nah, they didn't have that technology in Albania <laughs> in, I don't, in I don't, the eighties. Oh, you know what? Maybe I am because I was too, too big, big or to, something. Yeah, they're like. We can't wreck this woman's pussy like this. No. <laughs> like this fucking, right. We just see one of his toes. That thing's almost the whole fucking size of a woman's pussy. You know what I'm saying? I, what I do appreciate, because I'm like, you know, everyone's like, you're Sarah Gross. Yeah. Multiple people have shown me, like, videos and or photos of either them or their wives giving birth to their children. Because they're like, <laughs> you would love this. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that I, sucks. I do. You do. I do like. I mean, because it's like it is a privilege to be like. You are so. You are one of the craziest motherfuckers I know. <laughs> yeah, and I'm yeah, going to show yeah. you one of the most crazy the motherfucking most fucked images up things of all time. Yeah, and it's like you know, a it's baby's someone, head coming out of my wife's pussy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've fully seen it. People like I'm not that close with. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like yeah. awesome. That's fucking wild, dude. Well, this is low. We're, we're we're cruising here, but we got to take some questions. I would love to interrogate you further, but you know. I think we've got a great... People get who you are, where you're coming from, the kinds of... The unique perspective you can bring oh, to please. people's questions. Oh, please. Yeah, fuck. We don't have that many Jewish clowns here, <laughs> you know? Oh, I'm one, I'm one of them. Uh, there's, <laughs> yeah. there's millions of me crawling around the city. <laughs> I did... I don't know why... Th- this is... I don't know why this is going to... Whatever I've been having like You know I'm so Jewish and anxious I've been having like Stomach issues or whatever Mm. So I recently had a Did you ever have to do A stool sample Yes I Did you ever have to Sit with it On the train No no I got to scoop it They give you the little scoopers And they I just mailed it off You mailed it You mailed your own I mailed my shit But what Cause that's what Everybody's been telling me About this mailing but I had to sit with it on the train. No, that's wrong. But who's where are you met? Like your Mailed doctor's here. 
Yeah, the fucking lab. I remember that. Didn't you have to like shit on a plate or something? Yeah, you, I, you like fucked up the equipment. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, f- I I had to shit so bad. Like I was I was like I mistimed it, and I I think oh, okay. I couldn't find the medical tray, <laughs> so I took out a fucking plate. <laughs> I just took a dinner plate, and I shit like no. truly, truly the biggest shit I've ever taken in my life. It no. like filled the plate. It just I had looks. to do it like soft serve. <laughs> <laughs> I had to like I had to like fucking make sure it wouldn't fall off yeah yeah no yeah i waited way too long and i had just a fucking wild one bro and i'm just sitting there like whole like just with a plate of shit scooping it up i think i just threw the plate away you after bet. that i was like i'm not I may can't. have been like some you know firm plastic party plates we had oh, if true. i remember correctly. that's right it was, it was right fancy after- we had a party what was it? what party did we have was it new year's maybe mm. i don't know i don't know but we had a party and uh yeah we had like a little dinner party so we got like the the expensive like <laughs> dinette set. It was the plastic white with the plastic that really yeah that has like a real feel to it. You Integrity. Know what I mean? yeah. yeah. You could put it in the dishwasher if you're white trash. <laughs> sure. But we threw them out. Uh, but yes, that's that's right, that's right. It was one of those plates. But I straight up was like, oh <laughs> <laughs> just like <laughs> shitting on a fucking plate. It was but fucking you awesome. Probably you I think we don't realize how important the water is in the toilet bowl because that, that is what separates the men from animals absolutely where it's like you probably shit like that a lot but you would never know because it's True. just so muffled no i the- know but this like <laughs> even like you know when you feel one and you're like that was special <laughs> when it comes out like it was like, and i was also shitting like a long time <laughs> like it was like like we're going into like 15 seconds of just straight pushing something out of my ass it wasn't like a whole because you know when you've waited it usually just comes out like within uh-huh. five seconds this thing i was like when is it like i literally was like when is this gonna you stop keep doing this like as if you're doing the i'm not i'm not yeah, I, I was like i literally had to sh- i'm not kidding i shifted the plate because like one one like scoop it would have fell off i had to, it was i wasn't a full froyo but it was like a it was like it was a, a j it was like a, it was a loop yeah for sure it was a one loop last night i did a show it was like one it was like five of us got dinner before the show last night Mm -hmm. and we all we like got mediterranean food and then we all like before the show we're kind of like kind of like people were like kind of burping in the green room being like (laughs) Uh oh and we all had to like keep that's a problem (laughs) the same meal five comics one green room bathroom (laughs) that's a real problem oh union hall like farm stall oh that's not actually not a bad place to have for five people to have to shit no that's actually one of the best ones yeah and i kind of felt like it was kind of like a bonding experience for all of us being like I gotta, like, well, that yeah. was tough. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, what'd you have? Falafel. I they had chicken shawarma, but I I'm sorry to say this. I had an impossible kebab. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. I don't know why. I did. You know how sometimes you're just like, I'm gonna do that. Today? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, sometimes it'll just sweep. Like I remember, I was I was with a group, a big group, and everyone just ordered Impossible Burgers, and it was like you just got like, caught up in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, "Fuck it, I'll have one. Who gives yeah, a fuck?" Sure. Like, fuck it, you're only alive once. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's like one vegan crazy. girl, like, and, and then we we're like, "Fuck it, we'll do it too." Um, but yeah, that's uh, that was probably bad. But it was a. I thought it was kind of cute. It's like, oh, we all are. Sh-. I because I feel like I'm usually the one who's shitting. Right. And so it was nice to be like. Right, Jack it's and communal. Eric, they're also shitting. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Good guy, a couple good guys. You should have them on the. podcast. I would love to have them on the podcast. Yeah, me plugging my friends. You no, I love those them. guys. They're funny as shit, and they have a really funny podcast. And yes. I feel like they should be doing podcasts. Oh, I'm like, I'm literally like their mother right now. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You should go on that podcast. They're on, they're on the list, actually, legitimately. Like, yeah. I, we put a list together of people we want to get Look on. Look in the camera and say, yeah. ask them. I'm, no, I'll fucking text him. <laughs> I know Eric. I, was, <laughs> I know them both. I know. I was gonna bring Jack today. And I was oh, like, yeah, oh, stop. Wouldn't care if I brought Jack. I wouldn't. I like Jack. Because like, you know what I mean? When you're sitting on the... I'm like, I don't want to sit on the train alone for 45 sure. minutes and think about my life and think about how I'm 30. Sure, sure. <sighs> but I, this is better, actually. This is good. This is like... I think we got down to the bottom. We really did. Thing. We really did. Really you just got to let you punch yourself out. You're going to talk about something boring for a while. <laughs> And then, you know, we let that go and well, then we'll really like, get into what it. What do you like? You let a baby cry in the crib. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. do. I think a lot of my life is needed. I, I, I have to tucker myself out a yes, lot. Yes, absolutely. Like sometimes I get too anxious. So I have to go run around really fast to like burn my tucker myself out. It's just yeah. that's or just let me kind of talk. Of course. No, it's perfect. We got was some I, great stuff. Was the beginning of it kind of like 
No, we didn't. Remember, we didn't start. I let you really talk longer than most guests before we started recording. Because I thought we were hanging out like friends. We were. We okay, were. Okay, okay. No, no, that was part of it. Okay, okay, okay. You're a very anxious person. I just wanted you to feel comfortable. I'm usually not this anxious, but I've just had a bad A bad time. stress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually usually Sarah Wee. Oh, yeah. You're the- so <laughs> chill. Ask everyone that knows you. That's what they would describe you as. <laughs> Me doing the podcast because I'm anxious. Ben is mad at me. <laughs> let's do some fucking questions, Eldis. Let's let's get Sarah to really. I think you key and me people. giving advice to people is like an interesting yin yang. Absolutely, that's the best part of the show is to get. You know, I have a very I have my own perspective, but I like to see what everybody else wants to say. You've lived a life. I've lived a life. I've I've got a lot to say. Hit us, LD. Hit us with the first one. Hey, eldest, and hey, guest. Why would it work? Of um, course not. Hey, Dov. Hey, eldest, <laughs> and hey, guest. He knows it's coming. Is it going now? Yeah. Hey, Dov. <laughs> hey, eldest, and hey, guest. Um, I had a question that I'm hoping you guys could help me out with. Um, I've been hooking up with this girl that I met on a dating app. Nice. And the sex is great and, and stuff, but <laughs> I have an issue sometimes where, especially if it's with a new person, I have a lot of trouble finishing. Mm. Um, so, you know, we'll just have sex pretty much until my cardio gives out. <laughs> then I'll have to cardio. Um, and then I'll just kind of pretend to bust in, inside pretend? her. Pretend? You know, and then she thinks that I finished and stuff. Um, but eventually I'll, you know, I'll, I do want to finish. So, and then I'll just have sex with her again. Uh, so she's under the impression that I can just have sex like, a bunch of times every night uh, and she thinks it's great and she always talks about how much she likes that but as we're getting more comfortable with each other i'm actually starting to be able to finish oh that's nice so i'm having trouble going as many times as she thinks that i'm usually able to so i feel like i'm living a double life like I'm, i'm just living a lie and uh i don't know what to do i can't keep this up because you know, the stamina isn't always mm. there. Um, mm-hmm. So what do I do? Do I just be honest with her or do I just um, keep uh, living my my lie? Thank you. <laughs> this is awesome. I, I love this question. I think you should be honest because it's cute. It is kind of cute. Um, I couldn't finish because I was nervous yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got but, nervous. Yeah, but now I love you and I'm busting quick. <laughs> It is interesting, isn't it? I, honestly, this happens to me, and no joke, where I can't, I either can't get hard if I like, well, if I like someone at first, I can get too nervous. Uh huh. And then if I'm nervous, it either manifests itself in not getting hard or this exact thing happens uh-huh. where I can't bust. Um, and so what I would say to you, and look, I've figured out my own ways around this, not to get too crass, sucking on a titty while you beat off, usually oh, does wow. it, uh, getting your balls Mommy's licked while boy. you beat off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I do love my mother. That is weird that, yeah. that the two, those two correlate. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's ways around, but see, I, I'm going to bust personally, but I don't, and I don't have it in me to fake busting in someone. That's a I weird I mean, I didn't one. know we had an Oscar winning performer on the line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess uh, are women are Are you sure used she to... didn't know? That's my thing. With I have a, a condom, feeling condom, you could she... probably get away with it. I, uh, she You're might like, oh, kind of know. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be good at it. You can't be like, ooh, you know, you got to be like, oh, uh, Oh, you know, <laughs> something like that. And that's kind of, you do like it eight more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's so, that, that's such a cute thing to come out. Like, I mean, yeah. uh, like, I just, I like you so much that I was able to finish more or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I get that now you've set this impossible standard um, that you can't go that often. But I'm going to tell you this, maybe you got, what? how much pussy are you eating? Because um, that's always a foolproof if you can bust, if, because like when you're, when you're busting fast, right? I've had to learn, I've had to teach myself some tricks here in terms of finger pop. I feel like daredevil where my dick is nothing. My dick is like being blind, right? My dick is, so that sense is gone. So the way daredevil has heightened everything else, I'm, I got good at fingering. I got good at eating pussy, you mm-hmm. know, all, all other ways to make a woman bust. That's what you're going to have to do here. Your dick is going to give out. So now you must train your other senses. So you can still get her busting twice or 
hooking up twice, but you know, you don't. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, vaginal intercourse every time. You can bust fast, or the best thing is to do. You eat pussy first, and that kind of takes the place of the first fuck sesh. And then the second fuck sesh can be you busting fast. I Part of it might just be her excitement. Like, I feel like girls like it when you're like, you can go like a couple of times in the night oh, or yeah. something. They're like, oh, wow. No. Like, he's a fuck. I mean, not I actually have, I You actually ain't even have having sex. I actually have a different take. I think that <laughs> if you guys need to be having sex multiple times a night, you have to go to church. <laughs> <laughs> no one needs that. <laughs> Do you have a job? Get a job. This is like a too much time on your hands Sarah, situation. You, you, You've, you've disavowed every part of Judaism except fucking through a sheet. <laughs> you're like, you just have a hole. You're just fucking doing a crossword <laughs> until they this until they wig. bust. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, and look, now you sound like a young, healthy guy. I don't want to tell you to do this, Uh-oh. but another uh, option is to take dick pills because yeah. that, that that is how it is with dick pills. I think that this guy has like a sensitive little heart. I don't think his heart could take a dick pill. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He would or develop myocarditis. Or maybe it like he has to get more ripped. More ripped because he think? says he doesn't have like if like he his cardio. Oh, his cardio is bad. No, that's a see. If it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't think the cardio. Well, the cardio. If you're gonna finger pop. If you're gonna do a vigorous fingering, that could you get your cardio there. That could take the place of a dicking. Again, as someone with bad dick, usually when I don't, especially when I don't love the person. That's the thing. After when you're just fucking random people, sometimes your dick's not gonna get as hard as it is when you actually care about someone. So you take dick pills. Uh, but if you Did don't he take say them, the L word. Did he say love? No, but he's more comfortable. You know, I know, not but, love, I'm, but I'm like, actually like, wondering. I want to know if he's in love. He's on the wa- he's on the road. If he's busting fast, he really loves her. <laughs> <laughs> so that those are those are your, I would say you got to definitely tell her, but also figure out ways to keep that pace uh, a little bit. And look, it drops off. You don't fuck as crazy I as a relationship should, I think starts. you guys should stop having sex and really get to know each other. <laughs> because all that time you guys spent doing the devil's work, <laughs> sucking and fuck, you could actually be reading books together. <laughs> two, two dueling perspectives, but I think between them you'll find a, a solution. And good luck. Good luck, pal. That's really cute of you to bust fast out of love. Everybody calls you dog. We get dog in there. Yeah. No, it's the Google transcription. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah. A lot of, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's up, man? No, uh, I got a relationship <laughs> question. Uh, I, w- I was seeing a girl, and uh, we-, we were probably hooking up for like two months, maybe a month and a half in. She's like, hey, I, I don't care, Like, but are, are we going to date, or do you just want to fuck? Mm. And I like played it off, you know, whatever. <laughs> Uh, maybe two weeks later, she's like, uh, hey, do you, do you care if I see other people? And, you know, I I was like, oh, whatever, it's fine, no worries. Um, I I ended up kind of overplaying my hand a bit, you could say. (laughs) Um, so I I hit her up last week, like, hey, you want to hang out? And she's like, no, sorry, I'm seeing someone else. And we just talked about being exclusive. Mm. So, uh, kind of a shot to the gut. Now that I can't see her, I'm obsessed with her. Oh, and, uh, oh no! I'm wondering what I should do. Let me know. Oh, Thanks, dude, baby. this you oh. just you're fucked. Oh, There's nothing no. to do. I this exact same thing happened to me, no. uh, and it's horrific. Who do you guys think you are? Literally, a hundred percent. No, it's, it's wrong. like you make me sick. Yeah, I mean this guy. I mean some of us are doing really well, you know. <laughs> Some of us are pretty, you know, careers going good. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm selling the fl- out Caesar Palace. <laughs> yeah, I'm the Caesar's Palace, baby. I'm the I'm the flip side because when girls have like ran that line by me, like I just ended up in like two fucked up relationships. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. just folded immediately. Yeah, folded, I was like, yeah. I was like, fuck, what am I doing? Exactly. And and here's the other thing. This is how human psychology works. So like maybe you don't even like this girl. It's just that you can't. You just can't have. You can't have what you you know what you thought you were going to have forever. So, look, it's over. The faster you can get away from it, the better. Um, it's If she she was trying to be... Like, the, what happened to me is we never really had that conversation. And then she was like, I have a boyfriend out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And so that felt a little... I feel like I might have folded if I... Not even folded, but I feel like if I was ever made to look at my feelings, 
I would have been like, oh, you know what? Yeah, let's let's give this a fucking whirl. But you did get that. In- she did ask you that, and you did say no. And yeah, what the fuck were you doing? Were you fucking other people? If not, then what the fuck, dude? I you, think that you, you screwed the pooch. Your primary partner has to be yourself, and you have to be alone for a long time and look <laughs> inward and look at yourself and look in the mirror and see who's staring back at you and no, really get to know this yourself. This is horrible advice. You have to get. <laughs> this is horrible you advice. You should be celibate. <laughs> this is so wrong. You should be celibate and say what, who, no. what kind of man am I, and who am I really before I start letting other people date me. I have to date me. You have to date. You before other people date you. That is true, but in general, but not for you. You can't be. You trusted. need to get into a relationship fast. <laughs> Truly, I really believe that. If you get, if you replace this girl, you will not give a fuck at all. You just want what you can't have. And that happened to me where it's like, so this girl was like, "Hey, I have a boyfriend," and then I started seeing someone kind of casually, and I was like, "Hey, maybe me and her should date." But then I was on the road. I was gone for a month, and I came back, and she was like. Now I have a boyfriend. But it was like when there was somebody that I thought could have been cool, it kind of all I could already feel the like how sad I was about this girl disappearing when you're like, oh, maybe there's some potential in the next one. Let this be a lesson to you. You're not you don't have that good a dick. You're not that cool. You can't pull this off. (laughs) And just know in the future Mm -hmm. that's who you are. Mm -hmm. So get yourself a good girlfriend. I'm certainly taking this as a lesson like, damn, the next time a girl that I really click with comes around, I'm just going to try and have a real relationship instead of just trying to, like, see how much free pussy I can get and also fuck other girls. Free. Free. (laughs) I think you should be a monk. I think you should live in a convent and you should meditate and read and write a couple books and really think about the way you impact others. (laughs) I mean, that's... That last part's not bad advice, yeah, but yeah, you yeah. should fuck still. No. Get that. <coughs> LD, what do we got, baby? Oh, a girl. Stabby baby. Oh. My name's Megan. Hi, Megan. I'm um, from New Jersey. I just moved into um, my own apartment. And whatever, it's like a shared apartment. The lady underneath me has giant fucking wind chimes <laughs> outside her window, <laughs> outside my window. I work from home a couple days a week and I feel like I'm just sitting in here like rocking back and forth. That They're so sucks. loud. I feel this like it's awesome. a really rude thing to put uh, in a shared space. Uh, on a really windy day, I went out there and I took them off. They're on like a little hook. Ooh. Took them off the hook, just left them in the ground. And they were down for like a month. Uh, and now she's put them back up. And <laughs> I mean, my instinct is to just vandalize them. To just <laughs> no. Them off the thing. Uh, she's a really nice older lady, so I know there's really people call in with like relationships. She's nice. <laughs> um, but I'm really stumped on what to do. I yep. instinct is to vandalize them or to steal them, but then I feel like it would just be like a telltale heart yep. thing. Mm-hmm. And if I took them, um, I feel like I don't want to be like like a tell the management a, I don't think they would do yes. anything necessarily and then I'm just like a tattle tail eh, whatever um, or do I just like next time I see her do I ask her to take them down wow. and my other thought what was to write a really idea. nice note and get her a bird feeder better, and be yeah. like maybe this is a an alternative oh, please consider taking feet. them down but my sister I told her that idea and I was really proud of it <laughs> she said no just steal them <laughs> He's um, just a piece of shit. So hopefully this is a fun topic. <laughs> it is. It is. And Sarah's chomping at the bit. Uh, and if not, I know exactly what to do. With All right. So we'll let's, let's hear it. Thanks. The, love you. Bye. There's this like adhesive that's like, I can't remember the name of it. It's like, there's different kinds of adhesive that are like this, but it's like gooey, tacky, clay-like adhesive mm. that you can like, like make little balls of it. Mm. And... Uh, I'm gonna find. We're gonna figure out what it is. It's like okay. stick tacky, whatever glue. Okay. okay. And you could put it individually between the chimes, <laughs> wow. so that they stay rigid and like they a sway centimeter, together. and they'll sway together and they won't be knocking. And if she's like a little old lady, she's not gonna really probably. Kn- I mean, she didn't notice for a month when she took them down. Right. And like, if it's there, she'll see it dangling. Right. She won't think anything of it, but they're not gonna be clangling into each other interesting i like that idea i like that idea. i too. do that actually is a pretty good idea now look 
I'm gonna be honest with you. She's a nice like. If this was a dumb bitch, if you're like, she's a dumb bitch, she never listens to anything. It sounds like you didn't even bother being like, hey, this is really distracting. Can I take them down when I'm working or something like that? Like, I look. The real human being thing to do is talk to her, write her a nice note, and yeah, bake her some cookies, get her a birdhouse, just something, and be a good neighbor. But. Uh, Sarah's idea is pretty good. Mm -hmm. The problem is if it gets discovered, because like, okay, you put them on the ground, they could have fell. She finds weird little balls (laughs) in between her wind chime. She's like, who the fuck did this? It's so weird, so much weirder than like putting them on the ground. So it depends what you want to do. I I think you can, I think you can just fucking um, tell this nice old lady. Now, look, if she was a dumb bitch. Steal them, vandalize them, put the tacky on, do whatever the fuck you want. But it's Sarah's plan is very good, but it is high risk because if it's discovered, it's bizarre that you would put that someone <laughs> took the time to just put little balls in between each one, and that's no no way could you chalk that up to a mistake. But like them falling is a mistake. High risk, high reward. <laughs> high risk, high reward. Where is it? Else? Can you scroll back up? What she said? It's right outside. Moving to her apartment. Uh, what, a share it's it's like it's like outside her oh, window oh. and the woman's window. It's kind of like a shared outside space gotcha, outside gotcha, both gotcha. their windows. Sounds yeah. nice, I think. You should have a little wind chime. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I think so, but they're too big apparently. Or ask her to get a bigger, a smaller one, or just tell her to take them down when you're working. But or just sticky tacky tack it. Yeah, sticky tack it. You Those are your options. It. I don't know about stealing them, vandalizing them. It's not just a telltale heart, but what's stopping this bitch from getting a bigger wind chime? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh-huh. Or or is she an old racist lady? You could be like you could you could do that thing where people do like fake graffiti and you could take them down, and you could be like, Blacks rule, we hate wind chimes. And she'll be like, You put these up again and me and my black family will come back and beat the fuck out of you, you old white bitch. Fuck Trump. You could do that and she could be scared for her life. So th- these are your options based. Or but that's that's also the thing. You might push her into full QAnon mode and it, she'll take it as a sign that to stick it to the black she needs wind chime. So we you got a lot of high risk high reward plays here. Totally. Um, and also I just want to say don't have sex. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. We do need this uh the the deferring position, the uh, opposite position. This is like the debates the Chomsky, what the fuck? No, no. This is the Zizek. <laughs> no, 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 no. Who's that old one? No. William Talk, Willi- uh, William Buckley British and yeah, yeah, yeah. And who's the gay guy? Is it Gore Vidal? No, it was it was Chomsky and oh, Chomsky. William Buckley. Yeah. Yes, this is Chomsky Talk, like, and Buckley. Arguing about like imperialism. I'm the or some sexual. Bullshit. I'm the one pro sex. And I'm anti. <laughs> yes, there's big anti. All right, baby. Hi, Savvy. I am a 38-year-old single female living in Manhattan. Nice. I need some of your advice. I am finding it hard to date men in New York specifically Mm. as a very strong, independent woman. I don't have trouble getting dates. Hell yeah. I don't even have trouble getting second dates or falling into relationships. I do, however, think that I come in strong and assertive, and I really want your advice on, is it true that men maybe don't like that, or are there men out there that do like a stronger, more independent, more assertive, Mm -hmm. knows what she wants type of woman, and maybe I'm just not finding the right guy? Hmm. I, I know what you need to do. You need to go home during the holidays and hit your head and get amnesia <laughs> and fall in love with a lumberjack whose wife whose wife died whose wife died in a skiing accident uh, three summers ago <laughs> three winters ago so that's that's what you gotta do you gotta live a hallmark like <laughs> you gotta you gotta be on your blackberry at all times and your family's like put that thing away and then you bump into someone the blackberry falls in a puddle of water it short circuits and you have no choice but to be present and then you find through the spirit of Christmas that it's not your big high power job in the big city is not all it's cracked up to be and maybe family's what's important 
that's what I would suggest doing. <laughs> um, I'm I'm thinking there are a lot of like platitudes and sort of like abstract language here. Yes, that's true. And so it's it's making me sort of I think that she's kind of obfuscating a lot of maybe details that are important. Like, mm-hmm. what do you mean you come on too strong? Right. What right, are you right. saying? Where are the details right. here? Yeah, because this I, I totally see what you're saying because it's like this is a little girl bossy. You know yeah. what I mean? This is a little like like. Sure, like, for example, our friend El this year loves a woman to run his life. He doesn't <laughs> want to make a decision. He He's so much better off. His girlfriend dresses him, and he's better off for it. And she dressed you in that? <laughs> no. No, no, that's an El That's Believe his. Believe it or not, I <laughs> yeah, chose this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, so there's a little bit of like, yeah, what do you mean by that when you say very strong, independent woman? Uh, is that code for bitch? <laughs> that, you know? Because that's possible. Um, uh but at the same time, if you're the kind of person who is driven by their career, career comes first kind of thing, like, you know, always breaking plans because you have shit to do, you know, it's like there is a difference between you, you, you can negotiate, you know, your own goals and a relationship. The reality is if what you mean by strong, independent woman is like you're busy, whatever, you're going to have to at a certain point, you have to put effort into a relationship and like. Maybe not make it a priority, but make it a co-priority with whatever your strong independent shit is. Um, and I do think there are definitely people that, hey, yeah, what do you mean by strong and assertive? Mm-hmm. Like, in what sense? Um, picking a restaurant? That's not that big a deal. I think a lot of guys would like not having a fucking, you know what I'm saying? I'm hungry. Oh, wait, what do you want? I don't know. I think a lot of people would like not having to do that, you know? There's definitely, there's definitely pluses. I had to do so much research when me and my girl started dating because she was like vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, and I yeah, was yeah. like, and then it just like turned into like date after date. I'm like, God damn, I need like, I need her to step in here and just suggest a place. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, looking yeah. at these fucking like cool yeah. place, cool vegetarian yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, listicles. Yeah. Time out New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this was cruising through it. So there's a little bit of that. Like, do you, and I'm not going to tell you to necessarily um, uh, change who you are, but there probably is a little room for compromise here. Like I speaking for myself as somebody who I don't have time right now to actually like work on a serious relationship. I just know that it would fall apart. I'm, I'm never home. I'm too busy. My priority is my career right now. And, but I know that if I wanted a relationship, which I'm going to probably, you know, try and actually get going second half of the year when I have a little more free time, um, I'm going to, you have to though, but that's what I mean is like, if you're so focused on your career, like if I kept up this pace, I couldn't be in a relationship like this. You would year. never meet. Up you would never anyone. meet someone. You would never yeah. have like time to really talk. So, I know I'm gonna have to compromise my current lifestyle a little bit because a relationship is important to me. Do you have to do a little bit of that? Um, now, now, are you rude? Now, again, if, if this <laughs> is, if what you mean by very strong and the better woman is rude, like if you're like you know. Like the girl equivalent of like fucking Patrick Bateman over here. <laughs> like, and then like, yes, you have some stuff to work on. But that doesn't mean, but certainly there are definitely plenty of men that are probably, um, uh, you know, intimidated by somebody who's maybe more successful than them, all this other shit. That exists. But don't let the fact that some of them exist give you a pass on some of the stuff you might be doing that's you know, making these relationships not work. And I'm not saying it's even most, I'm not saying it's mostly your fault. I'm just saying like, is there stuff you could work on? Look deep within yourself. And if there is, work on those. And if there's not, then yeah, I think you could find like, um, there's definitely different types of people. There's definitely relationships you see all the time where the guy is kind of submissive <laughs> in in other ways um, and likes a strong woman. That's out there for sure. Don't. Have an intimate relationship <laughs> with anyone. You're in one. I'm in one of the most loving, stable relationships. Straight. Straight pride. Straight pride. <laughs> um, so yeah, good luck, Toots. Let us know how it goes. I'd love to. If is that if is that helpful at all? If if you need a little follow up, let us know what in what ways you're strong and independent. Are these people trying to date you? I don't think so. Has anyone ever come on and just been like, "Hey, what's your number? I want to go out on a date with you." Uh, I don't know. I think I have. I think I have hooked up with someone that's called into the show, but she didn't tell me until after we <laughs> fucked. <laughs> the old show, not this one. The 
the the Twitch show. I've definitely fucked people who like the show, that's for sure. <laughs> but uh no, I don't think I've ever fucked anybody who's uh who's called in, but I'm not against it, folks. <laughs> you know? I was just gonna say, there's a 38 year old, extremely independent, bossy lady. Well, that sounds kind of nice. <laughs> that does sound kind of nice. She's busy. You're busy. Um, yeah, we can figure it out. She lives in Manhattan. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> fucking Ma- Manhattan. I don't know if she'll come all the way out to Queens, though. You know what I mean? She's the kind. She sounds like the kind of um, independent, strong woman <laughs> that feels like it's t- too shitty to be <laughs> to, to live in Queens. <laughs> Um, I definitely have, my friends have dated, like, girls, like, rich women in, who are like, you live in Queens? Oh. Like, that happened, that happened to Soder before, where he was dating, he was dating, so, he lived, Soder, it, it, he was, like, on billions and, like, on tour and had, and, like, and he was still living under a bridge in Astoria, Uh (laughs) and, like, but still, that's a, that's a sign of a fucking asshole if they judge where you live, I think. Everyone does think it is the suburbs out here. Fuck them. Suck my dick. Mm-hmm. Queens is the best. Astoria number one. Astoria number one. Amazing restaurants. Great restaurants. Better than fucking, you know, a lot, lot of parts of Brooklyn can suck my fucking dick and balls. <laughs> a lot of them. You're fucking, oh, you feel good displacing a black family, you fucking pieces of shit? Just be normal and displace a Greek family yeah. in Astoria. Exactly. <laughs> one for one. Find the races stay together. <laughs> <laughs> one Greek in, one Greek out. <laughs> Hit us with another one, Eldis. Hey, Stavi, baby. Oh. Got a little pickle. Oh. Uh, been going on since about 2020. Okay. Long story short, my sister was living with my husband and I. Oh, no. So those two used to be best friends. Oh, no, no, uh, no, no. Really close, no. loved each other. During pandemic, another family, uh, my husband's best friend, oh. him and his wife and three girls would come over. We'd had our little oh, pandemic pod bad. of people we hung out with, kept it exclusive. <sighs> my sister and the wife ended up falling <gasps> in love. Whoa, curveball! Very, very long saga of cops getting involved, children seeing this and... Needless to say, no one's friends anymore. The husband and wife are now divorced. My sister's playing house with this fucking manipulative oh, bitch. Oh, we see and where you I, feel. I actually How you warned feel about her about, this? you know, all of this. The oh, first night they met, awesome. the, the wife came up to me and said, oh, I'm infatuated with your sister. Oh, 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 I always knew she was, you know, a, not a good seed. Now my husband... He doesn't want to ever go to any family functions. It's the kids have noticed. My kids have noticed. This is it's awesome. bad. This is the family's wild, trying bro. to get him to, you know, forgive her. So, but he's his whole thing is, I shouldn't have to compromise my feelings. I mean, yeah. Do you think I'm being unreasonable asking him to just Oof. put it all in the past and say it is what it is? We can't make people do or not do what we <laughs> want them to. What? I don't know. What do I do? How do we move on from this? Because I'm not going fucking te- separate to every family function for the rest of my life. No. Okay. Love you. This Wait, is fucking we, wild. Sorry. We need Her. to we need to map this out. Cause start from the beginning, Eldis. So scroll up for me. So she said my sister was living with my husband and I. So pandemic. I'm orig- I'm originally thinking sister fucks the husband. Classic story. I saw you go there. A t- I saw a tale as old as time. Your eye. But this is fucking awesome. This is better. <laughs> so my husband's best friend. So hu- so husband. So we have her sister and husband over here, and we have husband's best friend and wife, and they all and, have kids. And they're three kids. And they have ki- Both families have kids. It sounds like right. Uh, she had. Do they? I don't know if she specifies if she has kids, but I the- think she said like my kids are noticing. Oh yeah, yeah kids yeah. are noticing. Okay, yeah. Okay, cops are involved. I mean, <laughs> so her sister, her sister ended fucked, up cucked her husband's best friend. Right. Her sister cucked her husband's best friend, and her husband and her sister used to be friends. So it's like right. So, and now her husband doesn't want to go hang out with her sister. Is that correct? He d- yeah. He doesn't want to. He it sounds like he just hates the entire situation. Yeah. Yeah. But she says family function. So yeah, we're probably assuming the sister, but. You know, the sister's probably 
maybe going as a couple to these family functions. Either okay, way. here's the thing. And I know what it's you're awesome. saying. I know what you're saying. And this is just my perspective. I'm I'm I just <laughs> I, I couldn't get over this. I'm going to be honest with you. At least you can't force it started in 2020. It's not it, in the grand scheme of things. It has not been that long. I think at minimum, we're looking at a two year, no Thanksgivings, no Christmas cooling off period here. Mm -hmm. Like there's no and you also have to see what happens with this relationship. Like in a weird way, it's either going to last or it's not like in the off chance your sis. I mean, you think this woman is a dumb bitch. Clearly, you called her a manipulative bitch. <laughs> you clearly it's clear where your loyalties lie and it's also your sister I get that your husband's got a fucking point his best friend got cucked by he doesn't want to see your sister he doesn't want to see this person I get where he's coming from um uh, I ahead. family a family function yeah this is how I feel yeah as a Long Island rigid Jew yes 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 <laughs> Friends are people you like. <laughs> <laughs> Family is a lot of people you don't. You have to see. And you just have to see. And now these people are just falling in the category of family. So you guess what? You got to see them. I, How, you know what I'm saying? Like, see, I have a different take on this where it's like your family, ha you have to like your family. And if you if they do, like the bar is so low for getting a family to be disqualified as a family member. Totally. Where totally. if you do something fucked up enough to get disqualified, you deserve it. Right. You know what I mean? There's people in my family I don't talk to because they've done fucked up shit. Right. And honestly, I'm better off for it. I feel yeah. so much better about it. Now, this is complicated because it's he doesn't really have a blood relation here. It's just right. his best friend. I mean, it's kind of like me and you. Like, if my, if my brother cucked you, <laughs> I would be like, dude, that's fuck. I would be like, that sucks. You know, like, I, I wouldn't, we wouldn't all, we all wouldn't want to hang out, you know? And you add the lesbian element to it. That's pretty fun. That's well, that like makes it interesting, fun, at cool. least. Yeah, that makes it sexy, at least. I mean, it just goes back to my point of, like, sex is evil and will ruin family. <laughs> You're right about that. Now, scroll all the way down. So, what, so her issue here is that she... She's basically like, what the fuck do I do? Um, you know. Yeah, she hates a woman, but her question technically seems like she's asking, how does she make the husband come around and just, uh, you know, come to the damn picnic? I don't know. I mean, personally, I'm with the husband. And I know what you're saying. I just, maybe I... If this was a if this was a judicial hearing, I would have to recuse myself because right. I am for cutting people off. Totally. It's one of my favorite things in the world. Totally. If you fucked me, if you've wronged me, and the list is long, honey. list is long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. If 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 you've wronged me, I'm not putting my energy into fixing this relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm moving on, and I'm having a better fucking life now. The kids, the kids is the only. If it wasn't for the kids, I would say. You can't make him turn it around. He's right. This is how he feels. The kids is interesting because I would I would still want my kids. These are what cousins. Like you want the kids to hang out still. Mm -hmm. And I'm so. But I gotta be honest. From my perspective, it does have to be separate family functions. It just does. Uh, from and this is just me, right? May, you know, Sarah has a different perspective where you can just hang out with people you hate. But this is like I do it every day. But life. none of those people, yeah, none of those people fucked your best friend's wife. They're I, just a rude uncle. Also, you know what, what I'm, I mean? I'm getting here is that the sister lived with them. Yeah, they like did her a favor. Exactly, and her and the sister were friends. Like her, the sister and the husband were close. Yeah, and she betrayed him in a way. Not just his best friend. It's like a betrayal of trust on two different levels. And so I, I'm sorry. I'm with the husband here. Even even though I get where you're coming from, you could never make me do this. You just couldn't. I would, I would honestly put my foot down and it would start to cause problems between me and you if we were if we were if we were like if you insisted, if my significant other forced she, if she gave me an ultimatum, I would be like I would be like, that's so fucked up of you to do this. Right. And also, at that point, you're like, you're going to take your dumb bitch sister's side? That's how I would start feeling. So you're telling me your sister's feelings and you not wanting to fucking go to two Thanksgivings is more important than how I feel? That's how I would feel. And again, I have my own problems. Clearly, they're coming out in this call. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can't give an objective 
answer here. It seems really fucking fucked up and weird. If my brother fucked, fucked my your boyfriend, be- <laughs> <laughs> I'd go, whoa. I'm not hot. <laughs> that would turn you sexual all of a sudden. <laughs> You'd be like, whoa, this was my thing the whole time. <laughs> well, okay. Then. Gay incest hucking. <laughs> Learns I, well, I guess I just turned 30. I have a new lease on it. Yeah. It's like, I'm yeah. just, people be, like, just people do crazy crap. I know, I know. But it's like, I just, I feel like you gotta, I don't know, this one's a hard one. Doesn't want to ever go to any family functions. I, I mean, what? How many do you have? That's and what also, I'm saying. Also, There's like, she's bringing what? her around. Your right. sister's the dumb bitch. Right. Tell your sister to take this bitch out of Thanksgiving. What the fuck? Right. This is crazy. He's not wrong. Well, now your she's sister's the mom? bringing this dumb bitch around. That's crazy. Your sister's the wrong one. Talk to your fucking sister if you want to talk to anybody. Like that's the thing. He's being penalized for being a more reasonable human being than her stupid bitch sister. Right. That's what this is. You know you can't get through to the actual crazy one. Right. So you're gonna try and get the reasonable person to compromise. They're like, th- you know, what they feel. Well, I'm like, I'm like, literally, that's the thing. It's like crazy people. You just have to detach or yeah. whatever. You're not going to change. If this, these people are crazy enough to make these decisions, you're not going to change these people. Go to one Hanukkah. That's yeah, it. Yeah, one yeah, Hanukkah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go to one. Fine. You then Maybe there's some point. There's, there's a point for like some, uh, some uh, compromise here. Maybe you can go to one thing, but... Also, the thing I was saying earlier is like, you might just want to have to give it some time because what's going to happen is either this will reveal itself to be your sister's true love, in which case it's weird and it's fucked up. But or she'll wake up from her nightmare. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's one or the other. Either this woman sticks around and if she sticks around, it means, okay, I'm obviously not going to ignore my family for my whole life. So I'm going, she does become, right. she gets grandfathered into this situation of like, well, family's people you have to see. Mm-hmm. At a certain point, if they're mar- if they get married, if they have, you know, if her and this bitch get married, then you're like, all right, fine, I'm gonna have to make peace with this. And but, or you give it a couple of years, she's probably gone. Let's be honest. She's gonna cool off. She's in timeout. You she's gone. Timeout. She. They're probably gonna break up. She's probably gonna fuck some. She's gonna fuck her. She's gonna fuck your sister. She might fuck your husband. <laughs> you know, like this lady. This lady's trouble either way. So. I think it's it's not unreasonable to be like, can we just give this a couple years and I don't want to fucking... Be, and then if this bitch is still around in a couple of years, fine. But I'm kind of with your husband and I don't know if I'm right or he's wrong. Have you been betrayed a lot in your life? Deeply? <sighs> um, I don't think so. I mean, no I one's like- really... No one's, no one's cheated on me. Right, like I've never experienced betrayal like this. So that's why there I'm kind of like... There was one girl who I was like kind of dating who did some fucked up shit to me. It is something I worry about on a weird, for some reason. Sure. I think it comes down to like, you know, just family shit of like, um, just like, just deep-seated shit of like, even if you weren't betrayed, you were always worried about it. I don't know. Sure. I don't know where it comes from, but I definitely have that that feeling of like, I've been, I've had a couple betrayals, but yeah, that and that's what where it's like I will never like if like I there's people where I'm like if I see you I will fuck you up <laughs> yeah, and sure. so it's better that we never see each other sure. you know like sure and that's not, that's not that many people you know there's only Can't one that comes them, to mind for the cameras to be off yeah 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 <laughs> um and there's definitely people that have done fucked up shit and there's shit that I have allowed to happen to you know I, you know I've allowed people to do that but yeah I'm just. I always, if someone has crossed me, they're gone as far as I'm totally. concerned. And there's, I don't think that's a wrong thing. No. Uh, unless, yeah, you know, like a family member is one thing. If it's somebody that's worth working on a relationship, but if it's like a friend or who just like betrays you and it's like, well, you're not worth right. this. So anyway, good luck. I'm Can sorry. Can this I person hope, call back? And I'd love more. Yeah. This I'd love would be more a great detail. live call. This, would this be is great. like two minutes and there's still not enough details. I know. And you can tell she's only getting warmed up by the end. <laughs> you hear how mad she got at the end? Because I'm not fucking going to see Yeah, I love her functions. contempt, like just sneaking through. Yeah, you sneak in fucking manipulative bitch, all that stuff. <laughs> really good stuff. Let's get a time check, Eldis. How long have we been going? We're at 137 right Ooh. now. Oh, it's felt like 10 minutes. It's I'm felt starving, awesome. Starving, by the way. Yeah, yeah. We can have a little snack. A little snack. Um, why don't we do? Uh, why don't we do one more? What do you say, Sarah? 
I, I want a really crazy one. You want a really crazy That was, I mean, this I one. I really. Are we I, topping I this wanna, one? Probably this not. Wild. But if there could be one, like, in the arena. Eldest, yeah. do you have anything? I got something. Uh-oh. Because that was, like. Big Elds got it. I mean, yeah, it's not topping that, but. Fuck, what is this bullshit? God damn it. You start playing a phone call. I had a different, I had a personal voicemail. It's my physical therapist. I have to, I have to go to Mar. Yeah, she wants to change my appointment. Oh. <clears throat> All right, let's hear it. Oh, what's up, Stabby baby? Uh, love the show. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I tune in for every episode. Um, basically, I'm calling because uh, my sister has this dog, right? And um, basically, mm-hmm. she's had him for about I want to say like three. And a half, four years now. Okay. And my parents, the the dog keeps pissing all over the house, honestly. <laughs> and at first, she tried to make it a thing that you know she was never getting trained and you know gonna get him fixed. And then, and then she went back and forth saying like, "Oh, well, how would you feel if your balls were cut off?" And, what? I'm not a fucking so dog. He never got fixed. He never got potty train oh, no. so at this point my mom's had it up to here with this goddamn dog i love him he's not technically my dog he's my sister's dog <laughs> but i have a pretty close relationship with my sister you know i love okay. her to death and i don't know man i guess what i'm trying to get at is that my mom wants to give the dog away and she wants to make it seem like you ran away. How old is your sister? And not tell my sister anything because she, she knows that if she this tells my sister, one. "Hey, you know, uh, fucking Bubba's going away," <laughs> she's gonna flip out on her and it's gonna cause this whole thing. But also, you know, if if she, if he stays and keeps shitting and, and pissing all over the place, my mom has these little breakdowns and shit. So <laughs> your mom's know, not man, wrong. Oh, also, she wants to keep it a secret, so I'm just stuck in the middle of all this, you know, do I tell my sister and, you know, prevent her from having some abandonment issue shit or whatever from this Wait, is she dog she loves, she's got, do she's I, either a child or she's you know, go go on. I don't know, man, <laughs> anyways, let me know what you think, later, babe. Yeah, this is the child. It's it's got to be a child. Wait, right? no, but doesn't the sister have? Wait, scroll Go up. up. No, because because he said he said the sister said she'll take care of getting it fixed and stuff. I mean, she has to be like you know this is a at least her late teens or something. Right. But it also sounds like they're both living with mom. Right. So I don't know. Wait, but, you know, I don't think we can assume have 18 to get your dog fixed or wait. No, you don't have to. No. But don't you like? Like I, we had a friend who whose dog she didn't they didn't get the dog spayed, and the, every time the dog had her period they put like diapers on her. Uh, uh, <laughs> and there's uh, like a dog fucking bleeding into some pampers and shit. You're just playing Xbox and you're like, oh, there's the fucking dog. <laughs> Hope none of her pussy blood gets oh. everywhere as I'm trying to eat Nacho Mama's wings. <laughs> um, um, I. Because at this point, the dog is ruined. So now you're yeah. foisting a poorly behaved dog onto another. Hu- I think you got to call in like a really intense like Israeli guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 like yeah. Fucking yeah. do boot camp on this fucking dog. The dog needs to be trained. Also, it's like your mom is not wrong here. The dog is shitting and pissing in her it's house. Disgusting. The dog's got. Here's the other. The only other way this can be fixed is it becomes an outdoor dog. You got to go Snoopy with it. Give it a dog house. I mean, you you pro- you sound poor. <laughs> you and your adult sister are, share, are still living with your mom, so maybe you don't have that much yard space for the dog. Um, but this has to be a fucking outside dog if it's not gonna get potty trained. This is fucking. That's fucking crazy. If I had a dog shitting and pissing in my house, I'd be pissed off too. Well, that's what my my mom would just kill me. Yeah, yeah. Like it yeah. wouldn't even get to this. I you would have seen in the news that Sarah was shot execution style between the eyes by her own mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like yeah, how did yeah, it yeah. even get here? I know this is this is legitimately insane. Um, I think you should get this dog away. Maybe is it animal rights? Are you helping animal rights if you assist in giving this dog to someone who can is better equipped to take care of it? Yeah, I mean, he's also... But the, th- the problem then is, like, what does his sister do? 
Right, like his sister's gonna be pissed off. Right. He also, you also say you love the dog. Well, why don't you do the shit? You don't want to, right? <laughs> That's the, the real answer here. You could step in and do all this shit, and you love the dog and everything, but it does shit in your house. That's fucking crazy. What do you mean he never got potty trained? That's so fucking wild. So there's just shit and piss and pee and poop everywhere, every as far as the eye can see. Yeah, that's in gross. And he's saying his mom is having breakdowns. It's affecting your mother's mental health. And this is years. Yeah, it's three, three and, and a half. half. That's pre-pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> Potty training is one thing. What is this a compromise? Like, they don't take the dog out behind the sister's back, but they do get it fixed behind her back and be like, mm. "We got it. We got to chop his nuts off and like." But just was, calm that's his not going to stop. Down. That's not going to stop him from shitting. Maybe. Uh, Maybe. Well, what is aren't, aren't dogs like crazier if they're not fixed or something? Like yeah, they're more annoying. They, like, behave a little better. They're more annoying. Least? I don't think if you get, I don't think like fixed dogs are potty trained necessarily. Right, right. Um, yeah, I mean the dog should get its nuts chopped off for sure. Um, I think you call animal control on your while well, your sister's out of the house. Okay. <laughs> you're you on, you're an, on mom's side. You're on my, you get animal control to collect the dog. The dog gets its shit corrected by a really scary Israeli guy yeah. who teaches the dog Krav Maga and it goes to a really intense family. <laughs> this is this is weird though because this also shows their mom is not a great mom. <laughs> like <laughs> like instead of like it, she's let the daughter get away with this shit. It's three and a half years. She doesn't want to have a fucking conversation about it. She's not like the dog gets fixed. Or it's out. Or you're out. Yeah. We're all out. Or, yeah. So it's like this. Your mom's a little complicit here, too. And what needs to happen is truly your sister needs to just fix this shit. And if it doesn't happen. Like, here's the thing. Has your mom given the sister an ultimatum? Right. Has she been like, look, we can't deal with this. You have to spend money to get it trained. You have to get it fixed. And uh, or you can either you can literally you or the dog. Either the dog goes or you and the dog go. You know what I mean? Like that. And she can give her that ultimatum. And if this is like, fuck you, bitch, because you're probably, it sounds like, again, you're white trash. <laughs> fuck you, you fucking whore. And she throws a Mountain Dew at your mom's head, a full can. And so you, she's got to at least do that. If your mom has had this conversation with her and she doesn't want to kick her daughter out, I see where she's coming from in terms of like letting the dog run away. But here's the other thing. I mean, I guess they're going to give it away. I was going to say, if you just l release the dog, he might just come back. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not going to. There's not other. There's not many other two bedroom apartments he can shit all over the carpet in. I also am thinking we're only alive once, right? Okay. <laughs> when in your life? Do you get to team up with your mom to do a crazy lie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's like kind of like an amazing experiment. That is kind of fun. Where it's like you sit down with your mom and you guys literally do like exterior day. Yeah. Like like you like <laughs> we like this is a chance for like pure storytelling. Yeah. And like maybe you're an incredible actor and you it's true. don't know. It's true. Like challenge yourself to come up with the craziest lie mm -hmm. and it, this could be a test to see like how good of a liar are you how yeah. good of a performer are you how right. good of a a weaving of narrative are mm -hmm. you i think that you should give the dog away mm -hmm. find it a better home mm -hmm. i think that your sister comes home and you see can you cry like yeah, she yeah, walks yeah, in yeah, and you're yeah. like oh, and she's like what's wrong bubba's gone what happened this like literally these guys came into the house with like machine guns like, <laughs> i just think it's like yeah that life's too short to not see what kind of crazy thing can i happen. agree that's a great point you should do that you should <laughs> fucking put on a whole performance but look either he's an outside dog but again i don't think you have fucking what grass. is that what's an outside dog dog doesn't come in the house who does that Wolves? old school bro <laughs> that's how dogs used to be you didn't you know that's that is some fucking foreigner shit. Greek people do not respect dogs. <laughs> dogs do not come in Greek homes. Truly, like maybe in America they do, but not in Greece. In Greece, they're in the fucking yard. That's a fucking pet. It's an animal. Little it's, Jewish families with a little tiny Jewish Bichon. Yeah, <laughs> that dog is that dog stays on mommy's lap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I am a little. I do have some foreigner in me where I'm like, ah, the dog in my fucking bed. That's well, gross. Disgusting. Yeah, but a lot of people do that. 
Uh, I don't know. So look, you're kind of fucked here. Your family clearly has, this is just a, this is a symptom of a larger problem of your family having poor totally. communication skills. Totally. And you're not going to fix it over this dog, but I get where your mom's coming from. And your sister's going to either have to fucking fix the dog, like fix it as in like potty, tra- you know, spend money to train it, get its nuts chopped off. Or she's going to have to just like fold and do whatever the fuck your mom wants, from my perspective, anyway. Dogs are a good lesson in, like, um, every decision you make has consequence. When you yeah, make the mistakes yeah, yeah. with a right, dog, right. that is 30 years of a problem. Yeah. Or however long dogs live. Like, like you 10, just created a problem for 30? 10 How years. How long do you think fucking dogs live? What the fuck? <laughs> well, I'm 30, so I'm getting put down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, sorry. Uh, I don't fucking know what to tell you. Just You could also just... You could make it look like the dog tried to attack you, and then you could kill it with your bare hands. <laughs> Let's also be honest. This dog gets... Your mom gives this dog away. It's going to a fucking shelter. People are going to be like, this dog shits everywhere. I'm not <laughs> taking it. And they're going to get... That boy's getting fucking put down. <laughs> Unless he's cute as hell. Who knows? But, yeah, dude. Sorry. Best case scenario, your dog gets pretty womaned by a rich family. <laughs> and it gets trained. It gets everything nice, but... He gets my yeah. fair lady. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, they they turn that hoe into a housewife. <laughs> Good luck. Hope the dog survives and hope your family survives. But I think that's going to do it for us, folks. Sarah, you you got anything you want to plug? Yeah. Um a and W. It's so good. It's truly the best diet soda. I'm going on tour. Yeah, go see Sarah on tour. Where are we going? Austin, they find Sarah, San Francisco, Sarah.com, Sarah.com. <laughs> yeah, go to Sarah.com. All the info. Sometimes there. I'm on TV. Yeah, Fucking yeah, you yeah. people don't watch it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, retweet uh, or, you know, like the TikTok, any TikToks you see of Sarah from SNL. That's how that's how children are, are watching it. I'm scared of that. Yeah. I haven't seen the, any TikToks of me and I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Loud, ugly Jewish woman on SNL. Um, thank you guys for listening. Thanks, Sarah, for coming on the show. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye. That was fun. Yeah, it was good.